What's up, everybody? It's a party. Hit me with party sirens. Mm, there they be. Yo, grinders. What's up, everybody? <laughs> oh, man. Yo, shout out. Buck. You got it, Buck. Get that beating suit on, Buck. Buck's ready, man. He's in the pool. Get him out of the pool. Yo, shout out to everybody. Yo, Max Powers, Sergeant Social Destruct, Gaming Knight. What's up, Jedi Johnny? There he is, Max Powers. Yo, who's this? Two Bone SB. I got to zoom in because my, my, my screen's a little small over here. DDP, Diamond Dallas. Boom. What's up, Sergeant? How you doing? Social Destruct, the tools are here. The tools are in the building. We got the tools here. Oh, I need... Oh, who, 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 who's that? Frogs! Man, bro, Frogs, what's up, yo! Late, what's up? Late. Yes, yeah, it's all right. That's all right, Frogs. This is my wonderful co-host, Frogs. But, Frogs, do you see the party we got in here? We got the house party. Man, we got it loaded. We got a loaded house party, dude. The Grind's house is open. And we're going to start right now with introductions. First, you know Frogs. Frogs. Tell them the game that you've been playing that I had to pull you away from. Oh, my gosh. Hey, let me tell you something. Tales of Arise. Oh, my goodness. My game of the year. Oh, damn. Frogs on there. In, 15 hours in, I've not played a better game this year. And, you know, I, I would say this game, it rivals Final Fantasy VII Remake. Oh, this damn. game Frog's is going there. freaking... It's freaking amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Well, Frogs, that is good. We got pulling frogs from that game, and we got a huge lineup here. So, um, first, I wanted to say thank you so much to the Grinders. I did my thank you show last week. I know it was an impromptu. Some people at work, I was getting messages going, oh, oh, I was at work. I am so sorry. I just had to get one out there. I wanted to make sure that, you know, I thanked you guys and stuff like that. And, and you know, for all the support as we got to uh 1k subscribers i can't believe it I, I i'm still surreal like i keep checking it looking at it. i'm like is this real and then i get emails from youtube going you hit 1k i'm like holy crap like this shit is this is unreal but you know and ever, as i got that stuff i was like i got it i want everybody that you know i as many people as i could try to get i want to get more i couldn't fit everybody but you know i definitely wanted to do something and i was like the first person i was like i gotta reach out to kid smooth and shout out to kid smooth 
He's here tonight. Yo, me and him, man, we go back to the OG Planet Xbox crew. I invited Merc305. He's on his way. We're going to have an OG Xbox Planet Xbox reunion with Frogs, myself, Merc, <laughs> and Smooth. Yo, what's up, Smooth? How you doing, man? Thank you so cool. much. <laughs> what's up, Jez? Uh, congrats on 1K. That's a big milestone. Um, happy to see that you, uh, you make it there. You grind. This was a real grind. It was a grind. Actually, a few years. That right? make, the name. The name is fitting. Uh, you grinded your way to a thousand uh, subs, so that's a, a big feat. Happy for you, and um, um, I'm here for you, support, and um, I'm I'm happy that you made it here, and I'm happy to be on the show because, like I said, this is memories. We got frogs here. All we need is Merc. He's coming. Literally original <laughs> PX career, which is crazy. I, I should throw up the classic image. <laughs> he should. There it is. The bot. What was like the Terminator bot that you had? Like, yeah, like the, it was like the Terminator head. You know, no, remember all of our characters? Yes. The, I still yeah, have mine. He's, he, I, I'm going to throw it in a man, Discord. Man, do I remember that? <laughs> frog was like, Frog, what were you? You were the uh, frog with the... Uh, with yep. With the sword. With the sword. <laughs> the sword. Yep. We gotta get the guy, man. That was awesome. I remember when like when Smooth sent that to me, man. I was just like, holy crap, it's Conker. Like I'm like he's in like a tuxedo and he has like a little martini glass. <laughs> I was like, oh shit. I'm like, yes. Yeah. That is freaking yeah. awesome. Where, where's the smooth thing, man? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, shout, there it oh, there it is. The OG crew. Uh, I'm gonna share this out. Let me share this. Oh, damn. Yo, Merc, what's up, man? Yo, what's up? What's up? Merc's I guess I came at the, the right time. Yes, man. man. Planet Xbox wait, reunion, gonna, you know? Yes, it is the reunion, man. We got old, new, and brand new people. Man, this is a party. Where where the hell's my display thing? See, I'm already messing it up. Where is my display? Here it is. There it is. The OG Planet Xbox crew, dude. <laughs> dude wait who's is that gaming addict is that who that's that, supposed the, to be the, yeah in that oh, yeah, yeah, we, got yeah. Addict, man. we had we had merc in the wow, gears we had everybody <laughs> we, we had frog as the actual frog. yo was yeah i was the conquer times yeah man i was conquer right here man that was that, that was me because I was I was venting that was started the grinding my gears. I'm like, what they're doing with Conker? What are they doing with them? Yo, <laughs> and this frogs like frogs. I don't know what the, that is. Some crazy ass frog right there, <laughs> dude. That's last. But what, he's here, Merc three hundred five. Yo, Merc, what's up, man? How you doing? What you playing? Hey, man, uh, in here, back from uh, made it right on time, huh? Yes. Yeah, you uh, for introductions. Glad to be here, man. Thank you for the invite. Uh, what I've been playing? I've been playing um. The beta for Call of Duty. Uh, oh yeah, lady. we'll talk no, about that. I know that. that's a topic for ladies, so oh, later. Yeah. So I'll reserve. I'll reserve my commentary about what I think about it for that time. Uh -huh. I'm gonna hit the. Uh, but outside of that, that's it, man. I've actually been um, I've been so busy. I've just been so busy that gaming's been kind of like in the back burner. But COD, COD's what I've been playing lately. Yeah, and I want to say, you know, he's bringing back UPP, our second reincarnation, the Ultra Preset Podcast. Merck is gonna, right. He's bringing that back, and he's bringing definitely that back this week. Peace. Yes. Everybody check it out. Definitely. And we'll probably Appreciate I'm not invite myself on there, but that is the other crew that we we did, man. We moved from Planet. We did the UPP. Merck's like, hey, you want to do like just a, a, a ultra preset pocket about PCs and everything? I was like, oh, sure. We'll do PCs, consoles. Let's do that. And then and then Merck became the football coach. You got and then uh, yeah, man. He got busy with, with the football he, and he coached his team to the championships, man. Meanwhile, my hey, my man. son's soccer team, we, we couldn't win a tournament. So. <laughs> But anyway. yeah, I know. I know what it's like, man. I know what that's like. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yes, yeah, thought low, but we're gonna do good this year, man. We're gonna do well. And then my my third person that comes on here all the time, Link. What's up, man? How you doing? Oh, there he is. He's not making renovations today. He's he's good. Link, what's up, man? How you doing? Oh, he's on mute. All right. Well, we got. Don't worry about Link. We I got was, Link. I Link. Released, Link comes I released, on. I released the. Grunt. Don't worry about Link. I will release the ground. There he is. Yo, what's up, Link? How you doing, man? I'm doing good. Congratulations on the 1K. Um, and giving me these opportunities to hop on, you know, periodically and stuff like that. Share my views and things and things about gaming. No problem. It's going to be a good show. Anytime, man. Thank you. Thank you. And now we have from the Saltiest Podcast, Kofi. What is up? First time in the Grindhouse. How you doing, man? Yo, I finally made it. You oh made my it. Gosh, all these, all these weeks gone by, and I've been promising to at least come by. Yo, congratulations, Jez. I cannot believe that you got to one k, and I didn't I even believe. make it before now. Um, this is this is awesome. I'm glad to be here, man. Thank you for having me on. Um, 
I just wanted to say, I guess, a, a little bit about what I've been yeah, playing. Yeah, what you've been playing, man. Yeah. So uh, I got to give a shout out to Frogs, man. Yeah, Tails is excellent. About, uh, I think I'm like 30 something hours in, and I just got the whole team together. No spoilers, of course. Nice. Uh, nice. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be so happy with Duhalim and uh, Kisada. Oh, my gosh. Oh, uh, it, dude, great. I've only gotten three of them. Uh, I've only oh. gotten three of them. I'm in the I'm in the snow area where it, it, it's always night. It never turns morning. That's where I've gotten yeah. to. And I'm at the yeah, second oh, yeah. major boss, and he is a pain in the ass. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're all the way at that point. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah he, uh, uh, I'm, I'm so enjoying this game. One more thing I want to mention because I finally got to play it. Uh, it's called Eastward. It's on Switch and it's on Steam. I lie to you not. It's a smash between. Uh, Legend of Zelda: A Link to the Past, and has The Last of Us vibes. And again, it takes place in, in a world where the population is decreasing uh, for some mysterious reason. And so the main character and his he has like a, a daughter figure. Uh, I, I honestly don't know enough about them yet. But I just played through the first dungeon. I'm thinking this game's going to be at least a nine out of ten, just based mm. on the, the writing, the presentation, the action, and controls. Go check out Easter. I wish it was on uh, PlayStation because, you know, that's my home console. But uh, it's only $20, $23, I think, on Steam. So go check that out, man. It's awesome. That's awesome. Oh, man. Did I mess up something? Yeah, I moved this. Oh, well, uh, so you're I playing apologize. on your Switch. So I'm playing on you Steam. Playing, oh, you're playing on Steam. Do you plan on getting the new Switch? I want the smaller Switch. I'm, I, I'm one of those rebels because I need to be able to travel, you know. And the bigger Switch, it's kind of, eh. I need I something gotcha. that fits. In I know this hasn't game. been a lot of talk about it yet. Like, uh, you know, they announced it and then went quiet. It is kind of quiet for that yeah. new Switch. $50 more. Yes. But, uh, Jez, I apologize, man. I actually have to go. Oh, man. Be, oh, grand opening, list, grand guys. closing for Kofi. My <laughs> goodness. Does. Yeah, I he made it here. I will be on for a full cast. I promise, man. <laughs> Kofi. <laughs> yeah, thank you, man. I appreciate you stopping by, man. And, yeah, we'll see you on Thursday on the Saltiest Podcast. But thank you again. Anytime, Grind House is open to you, man. Thank you for coming by. Thanks. If man. you want to jump on later, we'll be here. Not too okay. long. But now, finally, first time in the Grind House. I, I, listen, I can't believe I'm actually speaking to this person because I listened to him back five times years ago like when we were first on the podcasting and listened to it with xbox podcasting and just like you see all these people here and he can he can relate because he's italian we know what happens you have you've been preparing all these meals you got everything here full house mom can you come over and just when you have all this food here your mom's like i'm just bringing over a little something and then she comes back in with two pounds of lasagna and it's like mom i already had the dinner what are you doing just like I had this whole care, I had all these people. I was like, let's get, I want Mooch because it's not enough. And here he is, Mooch. What's up, man? First time in the grind. I want to thank you so much for coming on, man. Love the Crossfire show on Friday nights. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome, buddy. Honestly, well, let me tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm honored and thrilled to be here. First of all, congratulations uh, on the thousand, buddy. A lot of people don't realize this. I was actually doing it on last week's show. A lot of people in the audience that come to all of our shows, every, all the great people that are on this show tonight, they don't realize all the time and the effort and the work, and it is so gratifying to hit that first thousand. It really is. So congratulations to you, Jez. And you've done this almost as a one-man show, which has been the reason I'm so into this show that you do, because the, there's not many people who can actually take to the airwaves and actually entertain people for, I mean, I've seen you go three, four hours. I don't know how you do that. And you're solo cast, man. It's absolutely one of the most talented things you can do in podcasting and i do want to i i actually think that you know we are with greatness here tonight we are with the great kofi who is like the david blaine of podcasting he shows up and then he just disappears that's it five <laughs> seconds after his intro i've never seen anything like that that's outstanding the great kofi's here tonight um but just great great to be here tonight on the show can't wait to uh can't wait to partake in these topics and uh -huh. also to be here with kids move Frogs, Link, and Merck is going to be fantastic uh -huh. so Jess, thank you so much for the invite buddy thank you man thank you so much for coming out so, yes, speaking of the topics, we're going to go right to the grinds, bud, because that's how we pull here, man. We're going to go right to the topics list. Shout out to all the grinders coming in here. Salty said he's going to be swinging by, man. I tell you, the grind, the grind house is open. That's why I put that tweet out. The grind house comes in. Everybody comes jumping in here. So, let's. I got a new segment. We got a new segment. We'll see how that goes. Uh, we'll see where that goes from there. But um, we'll be doing that. But now, you know what? Let me go. Let's go to the grinds, bud. Let's see what made it. There's a lot of stuff going on. 
But let's go to the grinds board. There it is. Okay, it worked. That worked. Yeah, so yeah, that was my, my little video uh, uh, thing that I put together, my little transitions. But there's the gr Hopefully, you guys heard the audio this time. Uh, I guess you did. Yeah, the audio was good. <laughs> All right, good. I just want to make sure. But uh, yes, guys, hit that like button. As you're coming on in, share it out. We are going to the grind board. So let me just see it on my big screen here so I can read it. So with the first thing we're going to right now we're going right to the top we're going to start off hot the hot topic death loop versus returnal we're going right there so you can talk about how you like death loop if you played it and what you like and then you know if you played returnal compare it if you haven't then you, and you could just give your opinion on what you what you know what you think but or well, why you didn't like death loop but let me first start with the Mooch, who was just speaking Mooch. Yeah. What do you think about the Death Loop? Um, and then, you know, versus Returnal, like you've been playing both mm -hmm. of them. Oh, I, well, I Platinum Returnal. Oh, um, man. And uh, I, I plan to do the same for, for Death Loop. We'll see what happens. I'm not nearly as far enough away. I'm actually intrigued to hear what Smooth's got to say because he beat the game. Yes. Um, I'm hoping to do that sometime this week. But I, I got to say, I don't, I don't know if we can necessarily tie these two games together. Mm -hmm. And I, like I said, I want to hear what the rest of the panel thinks here. There is... There are some aspects of the game that will give you that roguelite type of feeling. I understand that. But really, as you progress through this, there are save points. Also, as you progress, I think what people may not know, and again, I'm only about five hours in, so yeah. you have to pardon me. Shout out to Talos, who actually, me and him were kind of chatting for about an hour yesterday on PS5 uh, in the chat and just kind of going over some stuff. And he further explained what's coming down the pipeline as far as how the game is. So you do start over after your two deaths or your three deaths, pardon me. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people feel like that's the roguelike. That's the returnal aspect of the game. In, in that essence, it is. But I think what some people need to understand is that you will continue to go back to the beginning. It's part of the game. It, it, whereas in returnal, you're punished that way. Mm -hmm. Where in this game, it's part of the actual procedure. It's what yes. you do to complete the game. You have to go through and do... Many different tasks that happen in the morning. Some happen in the afternoon. Some are in the late afternoon. And some are only happening at night. So you you got to go through. You also don't lose everything like everybody's saying. And I'm going to use the wrong words here. I'm going to use the word infusion or whatever. And, and Smooth will definitely use the proper terminology yeah. here. But, right, is it infuse, uh, Smooth? You, inf you infuse them, yeah. yeah I, I, right. played so, I played it. I played Deathloop. Yeah. So once you, once you take the gun uh, of your choice, um, the recommendation that I can have for you guys is you find yourself a blue or you find yourself a purple. Okay, until you infuse that, yes, if you have it on you, you lose it for good if you die. However, once you're able to start infusing your weapons, then those weapons do not, you do not lose them. They're with you. So there are aspects, like I say, and then there are also save points. Like, you can just stop and save after you've returned and you're done and you leave the, the, the day loop, if you will, and you're going back to your inventory and, 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 and kind of, like, bonusing up your character, etc. You can stop there, save there, and then start back in afternoon. So it's, it, the, it's a bit complicated. I hope I'm not being confusing here while I'm giving the, the, this kind of, like, play-by-play. -play. Mm -hmm. But Returnal is a much, much different... Uh, animal it's just a different video game it's it, yeah. I, mean, I understand the relation there but i would say this much uh i said this on friday's crossfire i'll say it again tonight the one thing that i think you need if you want to thoroughly enjoy death loop is patience mm -hmm. it's patience it's it's not a game that you're just gonna can you run through it absolutely i've seen absolutely one. i've seen a speed but if you yeah. right but the, the problem with that jazz is if you run through this game you'll utterly feel like you threw your 70 dollars right out the window yes. i mean this oh, game yeah it calls for you to do that research, look around, search every room, get the information. Because as you get more information, you pick up more letters and you pick up more of the recordings around. It opens more events that go on in the morning, afternoon, late afternoon and evening. And that's where you really get to expand the story and get your money's worth out of the game. If you just want to blow through it, you absolutely can. You have the right to do that. But that's where some people will say, I beat the game. I did it in 11 hours or whatever it is, 10, 11, 12 hours. And I felt like it was just kind of a blah game. 
it's because you didn't expand and look out and reach out and look into what this game actually offers. So I'm very excited to continue down the path of this game. Um, but at the same time, I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed Returnal too. But that's just a, the that is so a you're much the faster paced game. This is a very take your time, you know, make yourself a drink, hang out, <laughs> put your feet up on the coffee table. It's not always that high energy, high action type. There are areas like that, but there's a lot of this where you're just snooping around you're hacking things, you're reading material, and then you're expanding your library of tools and, and weapons and, and and powers with slabs, etc. So, I mean, I would say that reference, and I want to hear again, I'll, I'll pass the microphone off, but I'm, I'm interested to hear what the panel thinks on, on their, their kind of uh, rationale behind the people saying that this is a lot like a Returnal or a Hades, mm. where it's really not that type of game. But uh, I'm very much enjoying it. And I would actually, at this point, very early on, if you like the things I just said, I would recommend it. It is. It's a very good game. Yeah, I, and I agree. Like I, I've put. I've been playing Deathloop. I'm about same thing. About six hours and seven hours into Deathloop. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to hear everybody's a kind of opinion of what they think because it's been so like jarring in the you know the things with the reviews have got very high reviews and then the fact that you know a lot of people are like well you know it's okay like you know it's not what what the reviews say but I don't know I think the issue that we've seen so far and, and playing the game was that I think there are so many layers to this game. There's a lot of elements, like you were saying, building up your arsenal that really weren't described too well. Like all they showed was the combat. Correct. They just showed running through, lifting up people, throwing them out windows, like almost like the arcane kind of like, you know, setup of basically what you see in those other games. Like basically their other ones, the Dishonored and stuff like that. Like they really did. And then they always, and I, my criticism of how they, you know, shown it was that they didn't go really into more of the Juliana and the invasion aspect of it. And I know some people have been turning it off. I've been playing it and I can see it can be disruptive, but I like that. It's been interesting. And I'm going to describe it in a little bit, but I just want to go around and ask, mm -hmm. Burke, did you did you play Returnal or, or Deathloop? No, I actually don't like, well, as far as Returnal, I actually do not like roguelikes. Yes, so me I neither. Purposely, These are my two games yeah, I played. That's why I'm comparing the two. I purposely <laughs> did not buy that game and I probably will never play Returnal. That's definitely there not my kind of game. Uh, Deathloop, I have it. I already ordered it on Steam. I have a pre or I, I bought the game on Steam, but I have not played it yet. Okay. Well, I think you, you're going to, you might be interested okay. in it. The combat is there. Uh, I think you might be interested. Link, I know you were a big fan of, of, uh, Deathloop. Is it meeting your expectations? Um, I don't know if I was a big fan. I was anticipating it. Frog didn't um, like it, but you hours. were like, Frog, give it a chance. I like it. I like it. I gave it a chance. Um, I'm, gonna complete it but it's not really grabbing me i, I put a few hours into it and mm -hmm. it's 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 good i mean you know i saw a lot of the hype um with the reviews and stuff i'm not really seeing it um as far as comparing it to returnal returnal is my game of the year i don't think it's on the same level as returnal um but uh there are two different types of games yeah um but you know the aspect of dying and starting over kind of see how you kind of compare it but Returnal immediately grabbed me, and I just couldn't put that game down. This one, it's a good game. I see that there's something there, but um, it's going to it's, – it's, I can easily get distracted by other games, I can tell, uh, with uh, Deathloop, whereas with Returnal, I was all in on that game. You're thinking um, about and, it. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, thinking about it when I wasn't playing it. And uh, like, like Deathloop, it's a quality game. It's not a bad game, but um, – it's not it's it's not gonna be something I'm gonna really remember. I'll mm. just tell you that. Yeah, and, and I I I wanna get to uh Kid Smooth because you played both of them and we know from mm. your inf <laughs> you know how you feel about Returnal. <laughs> but you you actually finished Death Loop Smooth. Like so like what does it change a lot from what you're playing in the first five hours or does it uh, like does it build up? Do you see where those reviews like went with a lot of it? Or like how do you feel about it? Um, I can see where, you know, where some reviewers were in that. I can't think of the word, say the word enamored, uh -huh, enamored, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, enamored with it. Um, but, um, and I can see where people who dropped off early. Mm -hmm. Um, the thing is, is that th the game has a lot of elements that just, you know, that just seem done, like just right. Like, all right, this makes sense. Only, okay, this makes sense. You'll see many games. You come up with ideas, but it just doesn't pan out. This is probably one of the first games where I feel like everything it does, it, it pans out. It like it 
this seems like they intended to do this. They it just everything around it works and it works well. So yeah, it is a slow start. When it, it's a long tutorial, but it's one of the best tutorials I've experienced with because it makes things much easier. The game seems like it's overwhelming because when you think of morning, day, night, and stuff like that, it seems overwhelming. But like if you just follow, like you know, pick a path and and do it in order, things start to open up. And the dialogue between yeah. Colt and Juliana, it's just, it's so good. It's like, mm -hmm. like, That's I, I, the, I'm like, damn, best. Juliana, you, like, this, this, she made this character come to life. I yes, want to meet this did. girl. Like, <laughs> you know, and you can you sense know, the, like, the tension between the two and like the sexual yeah. tension and stuff yeah, like that. Like, Frog, because so Frog was like, listening to me play and he thought the same thing. Like, that man, really pulled me that, in. That right there is what made me interested and smooth. Like, when I heard the dialogue between them two at the beginning of the game that interests me but on the flip side i don't like arcane games i, I think yeah, arcane I know. Makes said really, that a bunch of times yeah i just don't think they make good games i just want to do one shout out yeah black wafers with the two bucks thank you so much i'm late as usual but congrats jez thank you very much black wafers <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah, smooth. Continue. So, so what do you think that? Um, so the the thing is, is that you're right. Like there is a huge. Like I don't know when I'm out of the tutorial because it just yeah. keeps going and kind of hand holding you in the fact like you got to die. You need to go here. Like in in uh, upgrade this slab. I'll get this mm -hmm. slab. Like they kind of promote you to kind of build up your arsenal. And I think yeah. they're just kind of making sure that you don't just run through this like an arcane game and just do the assassination, but you actually have this element of getting your arsenal up and carrying your arsenal over and infusing it, which like what Mooch was saying. So like, did you, um, did you feel like there's a part where it just kind of opens up or do you feel like you still got to follow the path? Because like one, and, and just to finish the question, like what Mooch said, the game wants you to die because the whole point is that there's yeah. eight, the eight people you need to kill, but they're yes. not in the same place. So you got four no. times a day, four places, but eight people and one person in the beginning at each place. Yeah. And it's like sort of like it's set up that you can't win. Yo, shout out to Salty Game at the ten bucks. Yo, thank you, man. Congrats, Jez. One of the best podcasts out. Oh my goodness, I don't know about that, but I appreciate it. You deserve the success and more. I'm glad you're a panel member on the saltiest podcast. Here's to five k. Stay salty. Thank you so much, man. Thank you so much. Um, very nice word. I'm very humble. This is, this is very. Uh, I'm trying to keep it gaming, but I, I want to thank everybody. Like I'm really honored. Like this is awesome. Anyway, I'm like starstruck. Starstruck. Well Wooly deserved. Gaiman. Well deserved. <laughs> Wooly Gaiman. Big grats to my well, brother well, on the one K. Thank you, Wooly. Thank you so much, man. I know it's late there for you, but anytime you're welcome on the grind house. But anyway, back to the question. So, like, mm -hmm. do you f feel that it opens up eventually that you could kind of choose how you're going to do your day or to kind of guide you into where you got to go? Yeah. So the game, like, once you get past, like, get out of that first. Once you get the uh, the essential items, right? Um, because you have to get like uh this uh, no, you obviously got to get the slab, and then you have to get the the because you you are uh granted an item, you know. So because the the big fair and the uh, term roguelike is like, oh, I die, I start from the beginning. What definitely does it gives you an item um to get two restarts before you actually restart the loop if you die. Yes. So you have to get that Don't once begin. you get um. Once you get that, the game opens up and you do mission by mission. It's just straightforward objectives. You can follow the direct objective, right? Mm -hmm. And then once you get the objective, you can either A, you can die, or you can just go back to the, uh, the base camp and move forward and then select which day you want to do. Do I want to go uh, tackle this mission and take care of this and stuff? It doesn't matter at when you do most, um, most of everything because when it comes down to it, you will be put in a position where you're all right, this is the correct order. And once you get to that point, it's not like you have to do everything from start. To no, you could skip throughout the day. And that's one of the things like yeah. you could skip. Like I, there was a mission at night and I'm like, skip, 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 skip at night. And then like at the end yeah. of the night, it just restarts again. Like, like I'm saying, like there's no penalty for like really I, dying. Like you just got to think. Mm. Yeah, it's the one thing too, Jez, that I gotta ask Move about. Well, I've I've had a conversation. I've, like I said, I had some really really great like just party chats in the past couple of days, and I think the one thing that's the most, uh, I would say, probably the biggest deterrent for people to pick this game up when they're watching people play is, mm -hmm. is let's be honest, that menu system, right? The menu yeah, system. That's yeah. That's, oh, that's and don't cool. get me wrong, I know Smooth at the at the level and the amount of hours you've put into it, you're probably like, dude, Mooch, I can run you right through this easily and tell you exactly, and I know you can. But I will say, the first few hours of playing that. 
it is extremely uh i wouldn't use the word confusing but you could go that far if you wanted to mm -hmm. it's a bit is intimidating for some people right it is it it's is a bit, it is uh, that, that's um, my because, yeah i have an issue with you that. know you've got to know to scroll over and look at the lists that are in the objects that smooth's talking about that are going mm -hmm. on they're going on through the day the afternoon late afternoon and night cycle and there's tasks and you can like select which ones you want and they'll, they'll show up as diamonds on on the screen and you can follow them around but I'm just telling you, and then there's another one that looks kind of like a uh, spider web of just information, right? Yes. Stemming I'm from showing you the menu going out. Yeah, I got the menu. Okay, if you're showing it so that they could see it. But my point being is, is like that's that's the part where I think you put the idea that people think it's rogue light, right? Where you start with nothing, which Smooth just said, and and Jez just said, you, that's not true. You don't start with nothing every time, uh, and then right. it, and then you add the fact that you have a very very cumbersome kind of. Uh, menu system. I, I think that's the deterrent. When people see this, they're like, I don't know. You know, then there's the trinkets, then there's the slabs, mm -hmm. then there's the infusion, right? Mm -hmm. And and again, is this complicated for gamers? No. But the way that they present it to you in the menu is a bit confusing. And the one thing that you heard Smooth saying, you heard Jez say it, I'll say it as well. The one thing I think Arcane didn't do well is they i don't think that they actually i think smooth you said the tutorial was good the tutorial is good once you know you're done with the tutorial but mm -hmm. what's funny is when you turn the game on and you start playing it you don't know you're in the tutorial you don't. Yeah, you're yeah, the yeah, yeah. Dude, right yeah, so you. that's the part where you're sitting there and you're like wow that was really cool after you get through whatever it is two hours however long it takes you to go through the entire cycle whatever but my point being is is like that's the part where i think that this game just missed the mark a bit is is the introduction and and giving accessibility to the gamer uh, with an easier way to read and work their way through the menu system. That's my. Yeah. I, that's probably Despite my web, biggest yeah. critique at where I'm at. I have, a, I have a question for you, Moot. Uh, sure. Do you do you like the arcane games they've made, like the Dishonored and the? Uh... That's a, I'm glad you asked that, Frog. Yeah. Um, that's, that, I, to be that's honest my with you, question. I, I this is what this is what's so intriguing, and I said this on Friday's show. I mm -hmm. I actually never liked Dishonored. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I thought it was um, it just again to me it didn't click with you. It did not at all. Uh, okay. I will say See, this I'm much. The same way. I will say this much though. That's that's the thing though. I I would not say that if you didn't like that that you wouldn't like this. There are aspects. Oh, I think okay. the positive strengths from Dishonored are in this game, mm -hmm. and then like okay. Smooth had said, the just the characters, the story. The, the voice acting, that's what really pulls you into where I think Dishonored was just a boring... Uh, right. Just that was really that patience. Protagonist, yeah. antagonist, yeah. like, relationship, like you're getting here with Juliana and Colt, and, and, you're, and, then, and then the stories and the activities and the vibrant... There's, there's actually lots of great color in this game, and right. Dishonored was just gray and... You know, just and see, land and and, and and you know, I was gonna. I don't mean to cut you off, but no. Go when ahead. I watch when I watch Jazz play. That's what that's what really pulled me and attracted me to this game. The the conversation between Juliana and Colt. I want more of that. It. And yeah, that interests me. And <laughs> I've tried. I put fifteen hours into the first Dishonored, and I was like, this game is not connecting with me, and I don't know why. And, I, and my mind thought was maybe I need to play it back on the PS3 when it came out, but, you know, because I, I played on the PS4 version, but I, it just wouldn't click with me. I have I have all the Dishonored games. I have the Prey game. So I support Arcane because I've always wanted to like their games, but they just never click with me. And I don't know why for mm -hmm. me they don't click. And it's not because I don't yeah. like stuff. I'll, well, I'll tell you, Frog. For, I'm going to tell you yeah, why. Yeah, for some reason, it's something about those... I'll tell you why they don't click. Games, they don't click with me. It's one of the things that that I, I you know I had an issue with. But first, I want to read out Jemiah Dixon with the five dollars. Thank you, congratulations, my boy. Thank you, Jemiah. OG grinding man. Jemiah has been around a long time, man. Ghost of New Orleans, oh, yeah, what's up, a man? Long time. Yeah, Jemiah's been around. Ghost of New Orleans, <laughs> yo, another old G. Let's keep it real. Death Loop is overhyped. Mm, I do think oh, wow. that a lot of people Ooh. are going. That way, T Rocky says it's turbo time. That's right, it is turbo time. Thank you, but yeah, like I do. The thing is, is like I I can understand where Frog come from because this is the thing that I have an issue with, and I'm gonna get to the to more of the gameplay. I'm trying to show the menus here, but um, the thing that I am not a fan of of it, like I like the story. The dialogue is awesome. That really pulled me in. I wanted more of it. Um, I do think that. The map design is definitely very intricate. 
you know, bouncing around, navigating, you find out you could get in. And it's interesting because you learn as well as you play the game. You learn like, oh, I could unhack that window and I could have went in through this way. I didn't have to go through the whole, you know, uh, you know, uh, re remove my powers of climb in. I could have climbed in through the mountains and there's this passage. So, like, you learn the maps. And I think they're very detailed and intricate in the fact that you could pass around. But the problem that 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 is not really hitting it for me is the AI and the combat from them shooting at you. I feel like you don't know that you're being hit, and it's this old school way of like, I'm gonna say like Bioshock, Dishonored, where you have these tall, real slender AIs <laughs> running around and they like their guns are shooting, but you're like, you don't feel like, you're like, are you hitting me? Are you not hitting me? Like what's going on? And it's just like this, and I remember like playing Bioshock, like you shooting them is fine them shooting you it seems like they're on a kind of like a fallout type rpg type weird that they're not they're aiming at you but they're not hitting you and you have to look at your bar on the side to see that it's going down and i felt that a lot of times even with the turrets like yeah, the turrets are like lighting up and you're like am i getting hit like i should be like yeah, you know you know mm -hmm. exactly the game the shooting mechanics mm, it's they're it's not, old school they're, like, they're, they're not yeah, it's yeah. like real old like that. I'm telling you, like, I felt like I'm playing like the Bioshocks, like these early games where I was happy that they had Ragdoll in them. Like that's kind of like, you know, that kind of early time of, of shooting games. Like, oh, there's Ragdoll. Oh, look. But I feel like that you don't have that 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 tactile hit and that kind of like yeah. did not the, hit. I thought it was just me that the feedback on get when you're getting hit because there were a few times where I died and I was like, whoa, wait a minute. Who's shooting at me? So I, I just, yeah. So it, it you know, the game... I see there's quality there. It doesn't really feel like a next gen game. I mean, the, the visuals are average. They're not great. The the dual sense was utilized a little, but I, I like don't the really steps. Feel like, the steps of the dual yeah. sense where you could feel yeah. if you're walking on hard floor, if you're walking on soft. Mm -hmm. Like I do like how the steps feel because it yeah. adds a little tension to the game. The whole jamming of but, guns, though, Link. Mm -hmm. I think that was horseshit. That's you annoying. Don't, that's that, annoying, that, and it only happens early on when you have shit guns. A lot, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so, so the so you're basically saying the jammers and guns is like playing uh, Breath of the Wild, where your weapons keep breaking. It, frog, you do it, it, Frog, it's, it's in the beginning. Effort. It's a parallel trick. It yeah, really yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, yeah, because once you get a lot of people say they don't like that. Once you get good guns, like your guns rarely jam. Like they don't really. Oh, like, yeah, I haven't still, experienced it. It's the shitty a ton. It hasn't happened like a lot, but the game just. It just the the banter, the dialogue, the characters, their personality. That's what's kind of pushing me to keep wanting to give it a chance. Yeah. But as far as the gameplay itself, you know, I really wasn't into arcane games like Dishonored, Prey. Just weren't my games. I gave them a chance, but that they never stuck with me long enough for me to complete them. Um, but uh, yeah. this game, you know, the game is good, but. You know, it's not a ten out of ten. It's not even a nine out of ten. But that—that's that was my next. I was about to yeah. ask that question. Mm -hmm. yeah, I saw I a lot of sites give it tens and nine. Smooth, you finished and, it. Yeah, you, but, do you think it's, yeah. it, it deserves those real high scores? Smooth, yeah, I'm interested to hear. Yeah, that. I don't know, smooth, because I know he finished it. So like, you know, it might be things I'm missing that maybe like it wraps up cool. and nice. I don't know, if smooth there. Well, I'm I'm interested to hear because this is a studio that Microsoft owns, and this game will eventually come to Xbox. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. a good thing if the game if the game is you know being praised as a ten or a nine, that's a great thing. But if it's right. if it's really a game that you know you're like, look, this is probably a you know a solid seven or a solid eight, then you know that needs to be said because uh, I've heard a lot of people, and this is what I love about the community that we're in. I've heard a lot of people outside of the IGNs and the GameSpot say this. Mm -hmm. They don't understand how they gave this game a ten, and yeah. and and mm -hmm. it's not because they hit Xbox. It's just because they're like, wait, you gave this game a ten? How? Like yeah, I don't see it. See, I froze I've heard here. a lot of people say that. I want to show because this part here where I was playing here, this is sort of an element that you didn't like. I snuck in here, and I, I actually I hear uh, um like what Mucho was saying with patience. You know, and it's like, so I'm listening to them and it, they drop a clue that helps me advance the story mission where he doesn't like chocolate beer. So in order to pull to pull him out, and this is similar to like Hitman-esque type things, in order to pull yeah. him out of, of all the, the characters that look the same, now I'm able to, uh, you know, do something with the beer that he, and I haven't gotten to it yet. Because every time I go in there, I just want to kill everybody. And my favorite thing, I'm going to tell you one thing, I don't know Smooth does this, or Mooch and, uh, you know, and link 
But my th- favorite thing is is hacking the turrets, walking around the briefcase, throwing yeah. it in a room, and then yep. activating it. Like I just can't get enough of that. I do like that. Yes. <laughs> I do agree mm. that this game is I, I mean, again to play four or five hours is not really like yeah like you know, for a need to give a review the tutorial but, but I mean the, you did mention a few things Jez and I like your your um uh, the way you kind of uh, married the two together but I mean I've played Bio, Bioshock's probably one of my favorite games of all time mm. and I'll tell you it does have a Bioshock uh, feel to it at times uh, I will I say I think the mechanics I think the mechanics in this are a little bit worse than Bioshock but mm. I know what you mean like. There's times that you're taking on three or four, and I'm I'm trying. You guys know this if you listen to my shows. I'm not a big stealth fan, right? Yes, so, like right. much I'm like not Jazz, a... I I generally go into rooms where I'm throwing the I'm throwing a turret down, down there, guns yeah. blazing. Yeah, I go in guns <laughs> blazing. So I'm trying to do some of the stealth stuff where I'm walking around and you tag each of the the uh, antagonists that are kind of out there. You know what I mean? All the enemies, and you can find out their. You can see their no pun intended. Their loop and how they they kind of walk around. You can also see what they actually have on them as far as a weapon, etc. So mm. I'm doing that, and I'm carefully planning my attack where there's a lot of enemies, okay? And I'm still early on, so I've got to choose wisely, as they say. So I'm doing that. And then, like Jez said, there was a few times I've got everybody in my view. There was nobody behind me, and you don't have that feeling that you're getting hit from anybody in front. So I'm like, why am I getting damaged? Mm-hmm. I turn around, and there's just a random AI you know, hitting you over the head with like a bottle or something. <laughs> well, they throw like, bottles at you. And I'm like, where did this come from? Like, wh- what's happening? You and that's that's a fault where it's like, if you're gonna make a stealth game and you're gonna let you know the player have access to so much, uh, so many of these different tools and things, you have to make sure that when you're looking, I look around. I did a 360 before I went and attacked this one area. There was nobody behind me, mm-hmm. and then I'm getting hit from the sides and behind. And like you said, you don't really know you're almost a half health. Yeah, so with all the vibrations, game, that's a bit frustrating, dude. Would, you could feel your footsteps. You could feel like the, all this rumble right. and stuff. But then when they hit you, you think that that would stand out. Like, dude, like, oh my god, I'm getting and hit. And there's nothing. There's, there's almost nothing. no feeling in the controller, or and then you'll see a little bit of the screen. You know, whatever that you know that, that blurs, simulated yeah. blood or whatever. Yeah, but I mean, there's there's no real feel for that. And I mean, that's that's crucial. That um, is. So I think that that is a bit of an issue. Again, like I said, I'm t- way too early on to give it an actual review score. But I could clearly say from playing video games, the amount of years I've been playing in my mm-hmm. life, this is not a ten. That's um, you know, okay. just, I mean, it's not a six. No, but it's not a ten. No, you know it is a decent game. Right. It is a it's decent, a, game. a very good game. And it's, it's a very, very and like what Smooth was saying, yeah. like the yeah. elements that they have work really well like the the guns and yes. the powers and stuff and i know they pulled yeah. some from dishonored but i have to say like the powers and the, and the mix and matching where like you can see i use the invisibility but then the teleport or what i like to do is do invisibility i'm not a fan of throwing people around because that causes too much of a commotion and you yeah. can see there's hitman-esque styles like this one the one thing that I'm also going to say is really interesting is the emergent storyline. And this goes into kind of like you go in there and everybody's in the same spot if you go in at the same time of the day. So you mm-hmm. kind of get memory of where your batches of, of, of AI are. And the AI is not very intelligent. You hit, you shoot a bullet, they'll come funneling in a room and you could just start shooting them and stuff like that. Only the people yeah, with the swords could dive. They, they dodge or something. They kind of add a little bit of a challenge. But otherwise, you could just mow them down and just like clear out an area because you shoot the button the orcas come running at you with their guns like and you could just shoot them but mm-hmm. um one thing that turns the tables and i really like and i think it was listening to smooth and i think he said he turned it off but juliana's invasion this is the part that i was so mm. involved i was so yes. en- enamored with in this I whole thing where that. somebody that can write frog heard my first experience and that's when it kind of clicked i'm like this game was sort of like uh, i was in the tutorial then all of a sudden i got invaded and i'm like Whoa. And like she locks down your tunnel so you can't get out. And yeah, then yes. and and then what happens is because now you're trying to do your mission, she locks your tunnel so you can't escape with ever loot or whatever you know weapons and slabs you got. Secondly, she could manipulate she could be any of the AI, which I don't yeah. find a lot of people doing. I got people you could kind of tell them because yes. people are just running around. They don't know where you are, so they kind of just have to look. Uh, one question I want to put out there about the Juliana element: Have you mm-hmm. played as Juliana? Smooth, yes. did you try? You have played. How yes. did you like that 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 aspect of it, playing as her? Yeah, so it's a uh, it's it's different. It's not different. The thing is, is that it adds a whole new element to the game. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. When you're playing as mm-hmm. Colt, you're playing for a story. 
Yeah. When you're playing as Juliana, you're also you're playing pretty much for XP, right? Exactly. And you get XP. The, right. Right. The more damage you know you do to people, you could pick you know pick up people weapons and the shit that they earn like during their playthrough, like their XP and whatnot, and use that to your advantage. But just to give you guys a heads up, and I said this in my re review, honestly, you could also use that as a co-op mechanic. You did, no smooth. Yes. Totally. I started doing that today. I was like doing. The <laughs> Yo, get it. Talk yeah. about it. I'll let you talk Be about it. But yes. Be yeah, whenever like you get to that point, because it, it, there's two ways. Obviously, I don't think it was intended to be. No, it wasn't. But you can because, do it. <laughs> but you can do it because of the AI doesn't recognize. That it, it don't it care. Doesn't recognize Juliana as an enemy right. unless you provoke them. And right. so Juliana has access to disable cameras and Tourette's and stuff like that. So you literally could literally like kind of walk somebody through. Uh, the game in the system. Now you yep. can't. You don't have access to all missions, obviously. Mm -hmm. But in, in certain times of the day, you don't have access to. But for a majority, you could literally assist somebody through if you guys want to play fair. Just that, you know what I mean. To be friendly, I would at least let your 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 friend get two of your lives so you can get some XP <laughs> before you. Before I know you, you can kill their hit. Like you could kill the person. Like I was killing that Wendy, yeah. that mm -hmm. Wendigo person. I was yeah. killing all the people in the lab. Like it didn't care. Like I was Juliana. I was killing them all. Yeah, but it's a uh, now. I've gotten you know in, invaded. Um, and, and I, I was pissed because <laughs> I was it. It locks for it. it. Yes, <laughs> it does, dude. So I saw Smooth's tweet. He's like, I'm turning that shit off. Yeah, I have my <laughs> gameplay of this. Yeah. I know, because it does. When you see that thing pop up, especially the beginning of the mission, you kind of mm -hmm. go like, oh, man, I just want to do what I got to do. Like, now this this changes stuff around. And sometimes they just quit because people can't find yeah. you and they just quit. But then you still got to unlock the tunnels, which is a diversion. Yeah, yeah which you have to find that. Now, I'm going to tell you something epic that I did in my um, on my gameplay. But the thing is, it's like, I don't want to – I don't know if it's a spoiler. That's the problem. Oh. It's like if there's these moments that – it's like – Cause the night when they when I could, the, cause I was playing, I was playing to like three a.m. Um, Sunday morning, right? Saturday night to Sunday morning, and I was on the no, the last mission. I got invaded. I was on my last life. I got invaded, and I died. Um, cause when I was trying to kill the final person I needed to kill, but Juliana killed me. Um, and once you die on that part, you literally you you start that whole entire segment, which is technically the longest segment in the game because all the stuff you have to mm, do. At the end, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but I had a moment, right, on, like, the final mission where I got invaded, but when you get invaded, it's actually not um, a human invader. It's actually Juliana invading you um, during this part of the game, and well i she got me down like she got me down to my last life but throughout that whole entire like time because i knew i was i was probably going to struggle in this area i literally hacked every camera every I mean, turret. turret yes so i do everything it, when i, <laughs> I do when the same I got, thing <laughs> when i got to fight when she came to a, uh to take me out it just so happened she got me in an area where i hacked everything there so she killed me and the Tourette's killed her. <laughs> so when I came back and I had like no life. So I was on down to my last life. So when it, it popped up on my screen that she's gone, I found where she died at, which was next to the, the last turret and, I had. And get your lives back. I got my lives back. Yeah. And that's yeah. how I was able to finish the freaking uh, Dude, uh, game. But it was crazy. That's awesome. I, See, I, and, and that I happens, like, Frog. Yes. Like, yeah, because Frog was, was watching yeah, me. I, and that kind of. I was on the edge of my seat. <laughs> Yo, it, it, when you have that first interaction with it, I'm playing here as Juliana, and one thing I have to say, though, is I hit extreme lag. I thought this was part of the game, but she kept looping. Hey, I'll go to it. Like, she kept looping. I don't know. I just had bad lag when I was playing this game as Juliana. Um, but like what Smooth was saying, that's the emergent storyline. You do get some of that stuff. Like, I'm going to tell you, I have this gun where it uses a toxic gas, and I kind of just shoot it and it makes this toxic smoke around her and i heard her coughing and she's like <clears throat> so i knew where she was hiding and then i went and I finished her <laughs> off because i was like this fraud this gun is so overpowered i use this gun all the time i don't know if you guys are using it but it's the pistol that uses a puff of of, of toxin and it basically creates this cloud and they can't escape and like usually i get them in a corner i just pound i just shoot a whole bunch of bullets and it just yeah. creates this big cloud and she just coughs and dies 
When I use my favorite, one of my favorite, so all I did really was the stuff that I focused on. <laughs> Tourette's. Was, People say how you say Tourette's. Oh, yeah, Tourette's. Tourette's. <laughs> Tourette's. I was like, is that Tourette's? No, I focused on like uh, <laughs> the blitz, the shifting, um, and having the max amount of health and regenerating health. But my favorite move, other than being able to, um, uh, my favorite move, other than being able to um, shift, is to link people. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like, yeah. That, that's literally because yes. I find myself. Because the thing yes. is, uh, usually when you think of arcane games, you think of stealth, and I had to break myself out of that mode because I don't like arcane games either. I, I tried all the Dishonored games, haven't beaten none of them. Uh, for some reason, yeah. like I said, it's just so Death Loop was like more of a like a surprise <laughs> that I actually ended up um getting through it. So. The thing is, after I broke out of the way, like, oh, I don't, I'm not forced to stealth. They don't penalize me for not, like, stealthing or, or messing up the stealth. So when I discovered that move, when I would go into these scenarios where there's more, like, you know, more than, like, two people and stuff like that, I would just do that link. And as long as you take out one, you take out all. Yeah. You know, and but that's another together. that's another weapon, though, that doesn't really give you that tactile feel. Like, you just kind of yeah. throw it out there and you get that visual, but you really don't get the... I feel like I'm not doing anything. Yeah. It's like blah. it's like just gets thrown out there. And but then it is, I, it is one of the most useful powers because is. or slabs, however you want to look at it, because when you actually can do that, you you run into different areas, right? Like like early on when you're in front of the library, there there's so many enemies there, and it would have yeah. been nice to have that early on because if you could link them, like you say, you just kill one and the others drop. It is a that is a hell of a weapon, I think, in, oh, in this is. game. And uh, I wish I got it sooner. Yes. So with that, you know, uh, so Deathloop again, and like one thing I just wanted to say before we move on, I've got a lot of topics I'm going to throw speed run through some of these. I don't know if we can get through them all. But the thing is, is that, you know, the thing with Return, like I reason why I put them two together is because though I don't play rogue games. I'm like, Merc, I don't play those games. And like, yeah. Returnal was my first experience for a roguelike game, a rogue game like where you die and you lose stuff. Because I was always deterred. Yeah. Actually, Demon Souls was, but Returnal though I got hooked to that gameplay. Like I love the shooting and the gameplay in the shooting was incredible in Returnal. But I do see where they're not really the same game. Deathloop is definitely much more forgiving, and I do think the reason why it might have gotten some inflated scores, I think, is because there's elements in here that they could add to first. Whatever person your name shooters. is, oh! get ready for the. Yo, Mr. The mass produce. Thank you so much for the subscription. Thank you. Shout out to you, man. Yes, the thumbnail, <laughs> dude. That was from last week. If you guys don't know about Herman Holtz doing splits <laughs> to two PlayStation, I was laughing yeah, and, for fucking twenty minutes. <laughs> and, and and not to like just because there is like this is why I keep thinking of like why I like the game so much because there was like there's obviously you go through some of the bosses a, a, a couple of times and some of the yes. ways like that i killed some of these boss are are got through them were just like cheap as hell oh, I, I know wow i'm surprised like mm -hmm. <laughs> they're just standing in a corner there and i'm just like boom 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 i wouldn't tell you wait the guy with the mask dude i was fighting inside that mission where i was um well, I was, like, trying to k kill those wolf people. When I was trying mm -hmm. to kill the wolf guys, I'm, like, going through everybody. And then it killed me inside the main headquarters and spawned me outside. And I spawned right in front of one that was walking right at me. And I killed him. And it's like, you killed him. I'm like, holy crap. Like, that was so weird. Like, he was just some random dude walking outside. And, uh, yeah, you're right. Some of the ways you could cheese some of them. Like, they got stuck on a wall or they're just in the corner, like... They're not boss fights, like per se, and I wish they were a little bit more unique. And yeah, you yeah, them. they're they're yeah, they're not. You know what this it reminds me of, honestly, a lot because you. I know you mentioned like Bioshock, but I do get like We Happy Few vibes. Yes, too. like with same yeah. thing with the masks. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, yep. that's what I when I first saw this game, I thought We Happy Few graphically. I was like, this game kind of reminds me of a We Happy Few, and I might be wrong, but it's not. I guess my thing that didn't interest me is is and I don't mean to cut anybody off, is like the art style. I think it's something about Arcane, their art style doesn't really pull me in. And maybe this I figure like maybe this game will have a story to pull me in, but the art style they I don't know what art style they use, but it's not it's not like cell shaded, but it's not like a, a realistic like it's it's Victorian. Like, yeah, it's, yeah, I don't and, and I'm and I don't mind that, but not for a first person game. It just it just doesn't do it for me. And I hate to be that guy that just is like, man, I don't do it. It's not, it's not about, because I see a lot of people on Twitter feeds. Oh, people don't like this on PlayStation because Microsoft owns the studio. I can care less. I've never liked arcane games. Mm. Dude, I, I can tell you like this. I love anything Fallout. I love anything with the Elder Scrolls name in it. 
you know, I love anything with the Doom name in it. But I've never liked Arcane as far as the games they make. I, I've tried and I've purchased each and every one of their games. And I've tried oh, no, to like back soak to my life one. into them. <laughs> the play- yeah, yeah, the I, yeah, I went back. I went back to the first one, put 15 hours, and I was like, oh, my God. He's, tweet, he's, he's telling so me, he's like, oh, no, I'm not playing this anymore. I'm like, okay. Like, I just couldn't do it. And, you know, and I'm I'm a huge Bioshock fan. And when Merc was like, Bioshock, I was like, oh, I got to play this. But I didn't buy Deathloop because I just, from the first time I saw it, it, it just didn't scream to me, you need to play this. Yeah, I say you it's know, good on I, sale. I got, like, 50 bucks, like, 52. It was on sale. Yeah, I think I will get it. It's, yeah, it's I will not, get it's it, a good game. It. It's good. It's unique. And yeah. I think that there's some elements in there that they will probably start adding to maybe some first-person shooters. Like, I do think, that it, it, and it's interesting that they did. But just to move on some of the topics we're going to get here, another Deathloop and Returnal. Uh, quick rundown here. A Forza 5's online uh, modes were detailed today. Finally, um, you know, there was some information on Forza 5. You know, Microsoft loves showing off their Forza. Like, you know, Halo, we keep that, in the, that goes in the vault. We don't see anything about Halo. But Forza... You know, some of the elements that they've shown here, I don't know if anybody has seen this, but they've added, I didn't even realize they added a Battle Royale mode to to Forza Horizon 4, and they're bringing it back to Forza Horizon wow. 5. Has anybody played that Battle Royale mode in didn't Forza? I did that. Uh, I've never no. played it. I mean, Forza Horizon 5, great game, but I did not play that Battle Royale no, mode. No, 4 has it, and 5, yeah. they're going to add it yeah. into 5. Yeah. 4 had well, it. They added well, 2019. Well, 4, remember, 4, uh, 4. Four. four got it like late. It wasn't like yes in twenty nineteen. Right, got it. Was it. Late. Yeah. yeah. Did you try now, it? Is this? I, I no. played it like once uh, because I I didn't understand the concept and I the I, the problem I had with it I could I couldn't find it. So when mm. I finally got into it, I think I I got into it via like a um via like an invite, but I've only literally played it um once. So is it still there or was it like a time thing? Because I'll no, try, it's I'll play it. still there. Um, and okay. but it looks like in Forza Five they have it kind of laid out almost like I would not say a like Call of Duty style where they actually have it listed mm. like your multiplayer. It is the menu screen is right here. I'll show you. Oh man, where is it? Here it is. Like so, they uh, have it is, it. is it is it for current gen? Open uh, well, Forza or Five last gen and current gen. No, I'm talking about the update. No, this is this is the Forza Five is the one that's coming out in November. Yeah. They have uh, the yeah, update for Forza Four. That's what I'm asking. Is it going to be a mode for? It was already in generation or current. No, generation. it's a Eliminator is already in Forza Horizon Four. It was put out in 2019, but they brought it back to five and improved it. Mm. I think you start off now with a different car instead of the uh, the other one. But like, if you look, they they you do the Mini Coupe, I think, in four. Now you start off in a in a different one. But like, they have open racing, open drift, playground games. They have a lot of these kind of like. Um, you know, they had multiplayer kind of like weird games they had and like arcade mode. And now they have the Eliminator Battle Royale. And, uh, you know, it looked pretty cool. Like, you know, from the what, uh, the one thing, though, if I'm watching this gameplay and I encourage you to watch this because I do think the game looks like, awesome, is that it just still doesn't have like that life to it. Like, it seems like you're racing in empty streets, especially when you go through like, the city. Um, you know, it would be nice, you know, with the next gen power to kind of add some more life to some of them. Uh, because they're racing through the town and they're just like the same tables and chairs and bricks that you can knock over from the previous games are there. But I just wish they had, you don't want to run over people, but it would be nice to see like kind of a, a living, you know, a little more realism to, to, to that stuff to like, feel like you're racing through a town rather than a bunch of buildings. But that was the only thing I could see from there, but it looks good. Um, the, the, the battle Royale is a pretty cool concept. I forgot that they put that in, in the last year's version. Um, and it's going to be more open. This is some of the critique I was reading in some of the comments. They were saying that, um, there's going to be open racing, open drifting, playground games, the eliminator, but, um, there's going to be that the spin wheel again, but now you could just gift cars to people. It leaves your garage and you could just gift them to them and you could gift them to like newcomers to the game. You could just uh, and you could design it and you could just gift it out. And some of the people were complaining in the comments that, you know, it seems like a lot of the grind and a lot of the kind of the leveling system, they removed that as well, is not there. And it's kind of like you could just have like some of the great cars if they're gifted to you or you could just win them in the wheel. I was just seeing some of that stuff. But, you know, that's what they're doing. That's that's the that's the, the fill game nowadays is to just get everybody in there and get those cars. But it looks good. You know, I think it looks it looks really good. And uh, just wanted to bring those there. Did anybody have anything? Did they see it? Because it was kind of like a big stream that they did on YouTube and 
Uh, anybody watch it? Forza Horizon? No, I didn't. I I didn't watch it. I usually catch them because they what they do these. I feel like what every week they it do was today. Sort of, yeah, uh, it was like a, a let's go episode eight. Like yeah, so like I plan on watching probably a little bit later once um the stream is over and you get the on demand look, so it looks better. Because I, I yeah, don't, it I looks watch good. Forza during the streams, but I want to see because uh, I do want to check it out because I've been catching up on some of the streams for this yeah. the stuff that they've been showing and whatnot. It yeah, looks good. So yeah, had the, it on the Forza channel too. Yes, yeah. It, it, I'm telling you, like, it, like that eliminator mode, like, it definitely. And some of the game modes, like, it looks like they're adding, definitely trying to add some fun to the game. I know they had them in the previous ones, but it definitely is better just than just racing, like using the world. And uh, they said, like, one of the things they did now in five was that now with Battle Royale, they could have a race. Like, you challenge somebody, and you could race down. They designed the map a little bit better to kind of warrant a Battle Royale where four, they had the map already, and they just added the Battle Royale. Now they kind of, like, they have elements where they could have, like, it come down to, like, race up a volcano or come down the volcano through the trees and stuff. Pretty cool things. Like, you know, I, I think, you know, again, I, I commend how Microsoft is showing for the Horizon 5. I think this is what they should do to all their games. To kind of show that confidence, but you know, it, I think it's really uh, it was interesting. But yeah, I, I say check that out on that one. For the next topic here, if anybody know Forza, now we're gonna go to, to Kenna and the photo mode. Now there was some weird stuff with Kenna, all right. And I don't know who who will we'll, we'll let me see what this thing was because there was a panic, a panic from some reviewers that didn't get review copies, and. Oh, kind of correlating that to last year where somebody was debating that they started up the Kenna and uh, they owned it. 95% was developed from them. I think it was VGC or something like that. But I'm like, what the hell's going on? You don't get review copies and everybody's scratching their head? I don't know. This is weird. I think they dropped tonight. They it drops at midnight that? tonight. Midnight tonight, yeah. And the reviews, I don't know where the reviews are, but like, it's an indie game. Like, It's a smaller game. I don't know why everybody was panicking about you know the review copies i know everybody assumes that you know if you get review I mean, copies embargo yeah i mean typically there's red flags if, if 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 reviewers are not getting their hands on a game you know at least a week prior to or maybe you know even benefit of the doubt to the developer four days before uh, yeah. it's usually a red flag does that mean it's always in this case and i think you made a good point just there jez that you have a situation where you have the smaller indie team you know they were maybe just getting things out last minute blah, 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 the whole nine you can make a bunch of different excuses if you want sure, to yeah um, but I mean, I, I listen, you know, we all keep our ear to the ground. People know what's going on. I think this game's going to do okay. I, I don't, you know, again, I'm not expecting nine and a halfs. Um, but I, I bet you're going to see a fair number of, of reviews that score anywhere from seven to eight and a half. And that's just me from my gut. That's just me yeah. speaking from the gut. I, 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 myself personally am leaning towards picking it up. Um, I'll probably wait. I mean, the, I think the reviews come out at midnight tonight, so We'll probably all be up for that, mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think that uh, you know, check out the reviews, and then you you know what the game looks like. If you hear that it has quality built into it, then it's a game that you're going to like. If it's a game that you already saw from what you're you're seeing, there's and now the developer just in the past hour, I believe, or two hours, released footage, mm -hmm. and people are passing it around like hotcakes on Twitter right now. That so, photo I mean, mode is insane. It. Did you see that photo right? mode trailer? Oh, it's 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 gorgeous. I mean, the yeah, game itself is stunning. It so I mean, good. I like, yeah, like it, it hits all game. the things. It, like it, it, yeah. it looks good. It it looks like it has elements of like Pikmin. The photo mode looks polished. Like the only things that you could think that it could probably get hit with is that it's not deep with combat or short or right. doesn't have a lot of variety. And you know, there's there's the story elements. Like you got to think like that. Those are probably the things that could knock it because it's designed. The polish, the way it looks, unless there's technical issues that are later in the game and they only show the good stuff. But, like, I tell you, that photo mode, I'm going to show the trailer right now. That is stunning. And I love photo modes. I know people make fun, but I love my photo modes. I, I'm addicted to those things. I think you know, every game funny you say that. Like, I mean, I actually, I, I love, I think it's something that should be in every game. Yes. But I got to be honest with you, I I I do the photo mode thing for the first, you know, the first night or two. And then after that, I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I'm Even with Ghost of Tsushima, come on, I'm still like, taking photos. I know, game. but stopping and taking the picture and posting it and you think of a phrase and then a hashtag. You know, I mean, you know, sometimes I, don't, dude, I see you people do posting. <laughs> it doesn't you know, automatically. What are you talking about? Oh, well, you know, I always got to throw a little catchphrase. Uh, oh, no, Mooch I mean, is. <laughs> you know what I mean? I got to throw Mooch something brought out you there. here. Click on I this thing. You know, 
<laughs> Great picture, PS5 share. Come on, you need something. You know what I mean? <laughs> needs, so he's a hook. I'm sitting there for five minutes, like I'm writing, you know, like uh, some kind of monologue to it. But it is what it is. I think that uh, I, I, I think that it's going to be. I, I I bet you we're kind of flirting with somewhere in the eight category for this mm. thing. I think if you think the the average score. Quality. Yeah. Well, anybody else picking it up? I'm gonna get. It. I'm pre-ordering. I'm yeah, definitely. I'll gonna be. Get it. I'll be there as soon as uh it's available to play. I got it pre-downloaded. So. so nice. they, That's twelve oh one a.m. Eastern. I'll be. Yeah, I'm, I'll be I'm central. Definitely I'm eleven o'clock central. So yeah. Hey, Mark, I'm, you interested I'm in it? I'm super that? excited about it. Yeah, I'm interested in it. I want. I want to see the reviews. I want to see the review reviews yeah. when they drop at midnight. Like just to get a better gist, but I'm getting a good I'm getting a good feel for for the actual game. Like I, I think I like what it's awesome. I was gonna say, didn't they say anybody pre-ordered it? You get it an hour early, so eleven. Instead of oh damn, Froggy, let everybody leave the no, podcast then. I didn't oh, see that. that. Trap question? See is that the yeah. trap? No, <laughs> it's no, the trap. No, was, <laughs> they get the re- get it before the, the reviews well, drop. Well, this out. When I was looking at it, it said if you pre-ordered, you got it an hour early. You got to uh, get the game what an hour this? early. So this basically, instead of midnight, oh, is you got it on PlayStation. Is that is that on Epic Score as well or no? I think it's only on PlayStation. Only on PlayStation. Uh oh, yeah. Merc- I don't know. Yo, Uh-oh. I just want to say shout out to Harry Johnson, two bucks. I'm here on Mars and playing Kenna. Ten out of ten, brother. Oh shit, he's on Mars, baby. <laughs> Wait, who's who's playing? Harry Johnson, you playing it? Right. <laughs> he's on Mars. Yeah, there's, yeah. There, there's a look yeah, at this photo mode, dude. Playing, they stop and pose. Playing, so. Yeah, I got somebody yeah. my friends is playing, and I don't know how they're playing it. So I don't know if they got a, a code or what what they got. But uh, sometimes it happens. And I mean, yeah, Jemiah says there. He goes, yeah. I never buy a game based on a review. Eh, that's a good point, too. Yeah, I don't I don't care about the reviews. No. Like the game look really good. You know, you know, since we have a community like this, I go more off what the community is going to say than what the uh, IGNs and the game spot. And that's what I love about the community we have. I'd rather listen to the ACGs and like the guys in the community that I know they're going to play the games than to listen to the game spots and the IGNs who are saying, hey, 10 out of 10. And you're like, wait, how did you give this game a 10, but you gave this <laughs> other game over here a 7? And so I'd rather listen to the community of people that I know that are going to actually spend their hard earned money on it than the IGNs and the game spots. And that's yeah. why I like being in this community. And, and uh, it just, to me, this community, uh, to me, it it really brings out uh, the people as gamers, and it really it gives you diversity. And no, no matter if you're playing on Xbox, Nintendo, PlayStation, you kind of get a you kind of get like you know somebody who's a hardcore Xbox fan, who's a hardcore Halo fan. You're gonna get the brutal, honest truth from that guy or girl. Whoever's been playing that franchise, that's why I like the community I'm in. But frog, even and the I, streaming I, thing, I, like I stream yeah, to get all like the screen Atlanta. share. I do. We do that yeah. a lot. Yeah, I love relying on the community versus the the IGNs and the game spots. And that's what I'm going to say. Like, I'd rather rely on the Mooches and the Mercs and the Kits Moves and the Links than the freaking, you know, the guys at game spot or IGN because I don't feel like they're as genuine as, you know, I'm going to hear you guys. You guys are more genuine to me than they will ever be. Uh, and that's, I'm just gonna put well, that. That's out good, Frank. Thank you. Yeah, yeah you, you also men- mentioned uh, ACG man. He, he does great work. Does oh great man, work. ACG. He's, a, he's amazing. He's amazing. Man. He's amazing man. Yes, he's amazing. <laughs> so yeah, I, I'm gonna pre-order it. Yeah, the, this this photo mode is awesome. The game looks pretty damn cool, and uh, you know it looks so awesome. Again, like I was saying before, it could be elements of story, variety, things like that. It is not a seventy dollar game. You know, it is a forty dollar game for for that one, and the physical version is not coming out until November, so only digital right now. Uh, so that's another another little thing that I think there's no physical version. I think some people did want a physical version to this. So uh, with that, we'll go to the next one. Oh, yeah, this, one. this topic. <laughs> Call. There we go. Merck's Mark, ready. He's he's, he's greasing those. Uh, he's grinding those gears. He's getting ready. Call of Duty Van Garbage. Oh, oh, yeah, Call yeah. of Duty <laughs> Van Garbage. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. my God, guys. Van yeah. Helsing. Van Helsing, man. Holy shit. Mm-hmm. Dude, Holy it is horrible. Shit. And the Battlefield delay, if anybody cares about that one. But first off, that Call of Duty. Whole, Merc, if you played it, I got to go right to. I'm going right to Merc. 
Merck, oh, you play that Call of Duty Vanguard, please. I, I did, I, Grind I those play. gears. I'm going to hit the freaking sirens. Whatever your I name play, is, so, Merck, uh, we hit the big surprise. Uh, on both on PlayStation and uh, and PC. Uh huh. Oh my god. But but I've spent the majority the majority of the time playing on PC. Um, I, ha- I had an issue when I, when I first when I first uh, when I first installed it. I actually had a problem where it kept crashing all the time. I'm like, wow, this is off to a phenomenal. <laughs> that's just, this is that's just the tip of the iceberg, Mark. That's just the tip. There it is. Said, wow. It's a little warning said, sign. Wow. And you know what, man? I, I don't, I don't want to say that the gameplay is complete trash, but if you've oh played it's Modern there. Warfare 2019, it feels very much like it. it I'm gonna be honest. It feels like. Modern Warfare 2019 with a World War II skin on it. Yes, Thank you. That's, that's Thank you exactly. What it is. Exactly. 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 Yeah, exactly. The game feels it's like the modern. It's no, the modern no. Warfare engine. So I mean, it, it's, yeah. yeah. No, but I'm, I mean, I yeah. mean, it's it's literally like the movement. No, it is. Everything is, is to the T. It's the same game. Mm-hmm. The I mean, only, right. you guys. Yeah. I'll yeah. oh, go ahead. Finish. No, please finish. Yeah, yeah. No, no. The, the the only the only the only issue, and I'm not saying that that's necessarily a bad thing, but the sound like. The like sound. the way that the guns shoot, the sound, mm-hmm. it just seems kind of tinny. Frog, that's the first thing I said to you. That, that's my only like complaint about the game. But when I played it, I'm like, damn, man, you know what? This feels like a game that I've played before, which is obviously the Modern Warfare in 2019, right? Yep. And I don't know. I just almost feel like they kind of reskinned that game, threw on some couple maps, and hey, here you go. Yes, <laughs> I know. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's yeah. exactly what I felt. So oh, my God. It is, is, yeah. is the beta complete trash? No, it's not trash. Mm. It, is is it better it's than? It's at the curb. I definitely think Listen, it's better than. Cold. Merck, it's at the curb no, though. It's just no, waiting no, for the no, trash no, truck. No, no, it's at the curb. No, no, no. It's not Link? better than Cold War. No, no, no Cold War. Cold War is way better. No, no, no it's, is, it's at the curb. Well, I think the trash I guys didn't come pick it up. Those streets are trash. I'm a I'm a Call of Duty fan, and, and yes, I'll be honest with you. I I I got to be honest with you guys. You, you got to understand. If you don't believe me, go listen to the last six years of anybody you enjoy doing podcasting. Right, yeah, every yeah. single show is the same thing around this time when we get the beta. It looks like garbage. Looks like shit. It looks like static. It looks like this. It looks like that. And you're like, I'll take three copies. Okay, listen. Uh, right, uh, everyone's I'll do like this one though. This, this beta is no. 16 gigs. When this yes. thing comes out in November, it's like 200 gigs. It's all okay? filled mess and so fluff. It, the look, the feel is it's, not the game. <laughs> it's not the game. Second of all, someone I just I, I didn't see who was saying it. I and apologize. Someone was like. This game reminds me of something. It does. Call of Duty. No, you know dude, I mean? get out of here. It's, get out of here. This is, yo. I don't understand. I had a fucking grenade bounce Everyone across like, the place to hit me. I got it right here on footage. That never happened on got? Call of Duty. I'll show you. This this video, you see what I tweeted out? Oh my the, God, the guy man. threw the grenade. It bounced off the snow. I saw and, that. I saw you You tweeted that out. What was, the, what, yeah. That never happened Listen. any Call of Duty. Six years ago? Or never years ago. Here it is right here. Watch this. I go, how did I die? I've been playing Call of Duty. Watch this replay. Forever. I- I'm Look at the grenade. Off. I'm a little on the left. But like What the fuck is <laughs> What the it's, fuck is that? So it, it took it took a it took a Explain left turn. Mooch. Explain no, Listen, <laughs> it, it's they're doing this. Listen, you just had Halo come out. What? Halo the the, the first tech test. Oh, came we're out not talking. Right. No, no, no. Now hear me out. For, no, you got to compare apples to apples, right? So that was bots, and everything was like this and that, and the the textures look terrible, and this that. That's not the way the game's gonna look when it comes out. That's not the game you're gonna buy in this game. Now, do I personally think that the World War II thing is overplayed at this point? That's that's debatable. Mm. That's fine. Yeah. But when it comes down to it, at the end of the day, when you're playing multiplayer, I think the Champion Hill, by the way. The Champion Hill uh, new mode, I really, I really like it. I got to be honest with you, it's a fun, fast way. You know, back in the day, people used to say, "What is the recipe that makes Call of Duty so great?" And the recipe is: is anybody right now that's on the panel, I can say, "Hey, frauds," or "Hey, Merc, let's hop on real quick." I don't right. have a lot of time. I want to play two or three rounds. That's all I got time for, right? I can't get immersed in the death loop. I can't do a round of Returnal. Okay, I don't have six hours right now, but I got about thirty minutes. Let's play. And what I thought Champion Hill did really well was it really took some of the aspects of like a war zone, right? And it took some of the aspects of some of our finer parts of the multiplayer modes that we've had over the years. It's fast. It's quick. It's duos. It's got the uh, NCAA tournament bracket style. Uh, you're given 12 lives. Um, and, and, and I think it's interesting. I think it's a nice new mode. I've been saying this for a long time. I'm a huge fan of Warzone. But besides Warzone, because people are tired of Battle Royale, I'm not personally. Others are, and I respect that. 
we needed a new mode that was quick, fancy, and, and, and fun to play. And I think that Champion Hill at least starts the wheel in motion. Yeah. But, you know, here I am. Listen, if you don't like Call of Duty, this rant is not for you. I'm not talking you into Call of Duty. Believe me, I don't have to do that. They're going to sell 800 million copies with they or will. without my help. Harry Johnson okay. says yeah. with $2, yeah. it's, it's, it's going to sell billions that, again. Facts. It will. I, and I thank you, Kids Move. There. And I'll thank you. I sit there and I have a field day when we get to this time of year because it's just I, three or four weeks of I hate COD. But this is What's not COD. But this is my thing. I love COD. It's COD. But I'm, no, no, no. I love COD. And I, Frog and I play this all the time. Merc plays it. Yep. We are dot. We yeah. play this all the time. We're not just haters of COD and Flo of Battlefield. I'm going both of them. Everybody, everybody but this is Cold rough, War though. Last year, Whoa, Mooch, this is everybody rough. Everybody said this about Cold War last year. But this it's is terrible. rough, though. What's this trash? That's not my Black Ops. But Mooch, you know this I mean? like, is that's rough. That's what saying. Don't you think that this had some glitch? This is weird. Like, this is not Cold Duty doesn't come in it with this weird. bad It's two polish. months away from release. It's, oh. it's, it's, you know, I mean, I don't know. They got it's a team. Weird. Sledgehammer's a huge I'm team. A All they have to do is tap the shoulder of Infinity Ward, and what do they do? They come over, they help out, or they send some code over. I mean, well, they, send they, them they over got now. a hell of a team over there. I'm not exactly – I wouldn't exactly say I'm going to lose sleep on this game not being all right. right. I think it's going to be all right. Um, I mean, but listen, I'm worried about the code. That thing – listen – that thing with the, the the grenade that bounced left took a took a right turn it rolled down to the mall alley and then it killed you. Listen, that's a really messed up freaking event right there. But <laughs> I've been playing fun. Warzone nonstop. I'm probably gonna even play some tonight. And I gotta be honest with you, there's always something weird, wacky, stupid. And every single time I'm playing, even with the guys that play glitchy, dedicated, that I play, they're like, "What's that shit? What's this? I didn't see that." This is a glitch. This is a hacker. Like, that's all I hear day in and day out. I, so when people are like, I, I, to me, it's just Call of Duty. It's either you like the natural progression of it or you're I just not into it. But I've never seen it come in this hot, like this polished. You think stuff. so? I, this, that's the thing. Yeah. There's a lot of glitches, a lot of weird things, even the lighting and stuff. And I'm like, usually it the comes in. The lighting is weird. Yes. It's, like, the there were like flashes and stuff. But that's. And, and that's guy, literally somebody's got to go on their computer with I a mouse know, and but the blood was flickering on the ground in one of the level. I'm like, what the hell? And oh I'm not no freaking digital yes. foundry. I'm just like, I don't know. oh, damn, this you, is rough. I'm not picking on Jess. I'm not picking on you. The reason I'm so animated about this is that I played this beta immensely, by the way. I've been playing it nonstop. Uh, I've been playing it on PS5, and I've had, uh, yes, the issues you're talking about are there. They're not going to, if they're even there at launch, one or two of them still there, within a week or two after that, they'll kind of be gone. Now, the issues you're having with the hackers and the this and the oh, that, that's different, apparently yeah. they're having a hell of a time getting rid of them. And even when they get rid of 500,000, they're like, we just got rid of 500,000 hackers. And then 10, 10 minutes later, 2 million show up. You know, so it's like they have a hard time with that. Mm -hmm. But I just, right. it's just, it, and Jess, by the way, this is not at you. It's just everybody online's like, this is trash. No, I know what you're talking about, this. though. But I if you go back about. a year ago on Twitter or YouTube, everybody was saying this about Cold War. Everybody was saying this about... The only thing I think that got a pass, I would say, recently, was <laughs> the, the Modern on. Warfare from 2019. Yeah, I want that them to go a, back to that wow. engine. I, the best I want... In... Yes. Woo. That was very good. I want that Absolutely. engine. Absolutely. I is that say, this? I this say Modern Warfare... I would say Modern Warfare, uh, as far as the most universally, like from 2019, was universally appreciated... Cold War had a slow start and then it gained momentum. I think this Call of Duty will have a slow start and it will gain momentum. My my biggest problem with this game, because I play Call of Duty every year. I'm a huge Call of yeah, Duty guy. Yeah, all time. But my biggest, my biggest problem with this game is, and I know it's just a beta, but I've never played a Call of Duty beta from the get-go, or, or even Alpha for that matter, that had so many bugs and glitches in it. Um like this has like I'm I'm playing and like the lighting is flickering. I'm shooting stuff like anything you shoot in this game. It just turns to dust and you can't see crap, you know, and I'm just like, what's going on? The board designs are horrible, you know, and then they have it where it's like, oh, there's tactical. There's this there's that you're like, OK, what is all this stuff? And it's it's it's, it's you playing 6v6 versus you playing 10v10 10 10 or 12v12. And you don't really know that stuff. And I think some of the modes aren't designed for this. And obviously, everybody camps, you know, unless you're playing Domination. Mm -hmm. Still, everybody camps because right. I think the boards are really poorly designed. I think that uh, the time era it has, I think when you say World War II, no, I think right the time, there. The time yeah. to kill, the time to kill takes too long. Um, I, I, I also think all the, if you remember back to Frogs, you know this as well as I know this, right? Mm -hmm. 
the last World War II game, I also thought it had awful level design. Oh, my yes. God. Awful oh, level design. Awful. Yes. yes. That's snow map and multiplayer. Design. I hated it where you had to go. There's a and, few of these, right? And I don't remember because with a Royal Hotel or whatever that thing is. That thing is. There's just oh, some, dude, the hotel's so horrible. I felt it's like that when we played that yeah, before. That I don't care for. I but I mean, again, I, I, feel like, I feel like this. I, I kind of think the other reason that a lot of people are giving uh, Cold War a pass and Modern Warfare a pass is they ripped in a lot of the older maps that we loved. Mm. over yes. time and so you guys know what i say all the time right nostalgia is a hell, hell of a drug, drug right is. absolute second oh. hey guys i'm gonna throw a little something from you know vintage 2012 <laughs> everybody loves it right we're taking it but from like, the wine cellar you know, here we yeah, go don't forget that vintage 2015 you guys loved you know what i'm talking about we're gonna go way back but the thing about it is is that this year they don't really have that nostalgia factor here there's no great World War II memory map, nope. right? We don't have that. So they're doing this. They've always made it a very convoluted. It's very um, uh, linear. And I got to be honest with you guys. I agree. That's where I'm going to agree with you. And that's what I was going to – I guess what I'll, my, one of my last points I'll say here is that I do believe if we were to just look at the numbers, I would expect that Vanguard probably does less than Cold War and does less than Modern Warfare. But rightfully yes. so, it really is – right, it really is the Jane Brady of the of the trio. Yeah. It is yeah. what it is. <laughs> you know? yeah, it's going to move numbers no, right. no matter what. Yeah, absolutely. You know Especially with the delay of Battlefield. Think, like, there's no the – yeah. I think what's going to make this Call of Duty move is that that story, that that single player, because I mostly play Call of Duty. I'm not going to lie. I play Call of Duty outside of Modern Warfare. I play Call of Duty for the multiplayer. <laughs> when it comes to Modern Warfare, I'm playing this story. But outside of that, it's all about multiplayer. But I think what they yeah. show with the story base can actually make people say, ooh, I'm interested in this because they're doing something a little different with Call of Duty. They're They're tackling you know, different, you know, uh, areas of World War II. You know, they're like, oh, here's Pacific, here's Africa, here's this. And we never had any story really do that other than I think Call of Duty 2 when it came on Xbox 360. It kind of did that. And um, I honestly think, like, when I look at Call of Duty in this Vanguard, I'm a little disappointed that it went to World War II. I, I, I know that, and, now, and people are going to hate me for this, I know that Sledgehammer wants to make an Advanced Warfare 2. They've Ooh. been trying to do that. Activision doesn't want to let them. Nope. Uh, I think, I think, in my heart of hearts, like I think Advanced Warfare was the only Call of Duty from PS4 till now that had really unique movement. I hated anything, like as far as the movement that they tried with the wall running, was trash. Oh, like Infinite Warfare, good. all the Black Ops are trash. Like, you didn't like Black, Black Ops 4? Yeah, after no, after no, Black Ops Black Two, every Black Ops is trash. A A Infinite Warfare was trash. Black Ops is trash. I think Advanced Infinite Warfare, Warfare was, the, was bad. Yes, I, I and think then the Advanced Terminator Warfare one. Oh my God, that was Black Ops Duty. Three. I think. I think Advanced Warfare right. was the first Call of Duty that Terminators. really tried something new. And I think that when you looked at like the Black Ops uh, Two and I'm sorry, Three and Four and Infinite Warfare, they try to be more like a Titanfall. Because everybody tries to compare. They're like, oh, Vance Forward, you were running on walls. I'm like, no, you weren't. You didn't have a wall run. You, all you had was a boost dash. That's it. Boost. And everybody confuses that. Boost. You know, People who don't play Call of Duty, they confuse like a boost dash and a wall run. They're two completely different things. I think Advanced Warfare's movement system was unique. And I think that uh, it was very fast. And a lot of people didn't like how it was one of the fastest Call of Duty. And a lot of people didn't like that. Black Ops 3 was trash. Black Ops well, this trash. is the Jan Brady. Infinite I like that, that Advanced analogy. Warfare, the only issue I had was Jan, uh, Jane Brady, whatever that name is. <laughs> yeah, That's what, exactly what I'm sorry. What did you say? This is the bootlegs. The, the, well, I'm sorry. Go ahead. My bad. No, yeah, Mark. I was just saying. I was just doing some hype talk. This is the bootlegs. Oh, no, no, no. Just the gunplay. The gunplay uh, in uh, in Advanced Warfare was like I felt like the the weak point, but the movement was excellent. <laughs> I agree with you there, Frog. But you know, but you know what about Advanced Warfare? It was was different, and 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 a lot of people didn't realize this. Out of all the Call of Duties, Advanced Warfare had the least tran microtransactions because you could just play the game, and if you got, and it was just kind of like unlocking a loot crate. It was following that Destiny model where you can get a blue or a green or a purple or a gold, and you might get that that one gun. You're like, holy crap! I got a I got a legendary. You know, after that, they said, hey, we're gonna give you maps for free, but we're gonna microtransaction you for everything. If you look at like from Modern Warfare up until now. The, the season pass, I think it's a smart idea. Like, you pay for it once, and if you're a Call of Duty person, 
all you got to do is pay for it once because all you got to do is blow through that season pass and you're going to get your, you know, your, 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 uh, 1000 plus two, 200 COD points back. So you'll be able to play for the next season pass. So I think what Call of Duty did for us a season pass is a smart idea. But I, I also think that when you look at Call of Duty, like when you look at the move in and what everything from, from Ghost until now, Advanced Warfare is probably one of the most unique Call of Duties because it has the most unique movement system. That wall running crap was horrible. Oh yeah, that I was think definitely that, horrible. That to me, that to me killed it. I think that movement well, that's system. That's why they did boots Advanced on the ground. Warfare, <laughs> they made a big deal about boots on the ground. You know, because yeah. a lot of people don't know this when when uh, Sledgehammer, Sledgehammer. Let me tell you, Sledgehammer gets crapped on when they came out with that World War II game. They didn't want to do that that game. They want to do Advanced Warfare Two, and Activision said, "No, you got to do this game." They want to do Advanced Warfare Two because they—that's what they were feeling, and they—and I be, basically they were like, "Look, we can't come off of wall running the Infinite Warfare, giving people Advanced Warfare. We got to get them boots in the ground." And there's a World War Two game, and I think that Sledgehammer is in a really hard place. I think that Sledgehammer has a lot of potential as a developer for COD to develop something outside of a World War II game. And I think that, you know, Infinity Ward and uh, Treyarch, they kind of get the, they're kind of looking at the top tier Call of Duty developers. Mm. And I think Sledgehammer is a good developer. I just think that after Advanced Warfare, they just developed, after that, what were their their next two games? World War II games. You know, so they haven't really got to develop a game that's really their own outside of Advanced Warfare. Advanced Warfare... Advanced Warfare was their own. Yeah, and then what do you think about World War Two? But and I'm like in Vanguard, so I'm like, yeah, they need to do something. Else. We think this that is not cutting it. This is yeah, well, yeah, this is the roughest I've seen a beta come in. But like Mooch said, you know, sometimes yeah. the betas are rough, and then they'll fix all that because you're right. It was like 16 and, and, gigabytes. You know and, and Jez, they Mooch are going to be 100. A point. Mooch, Mooch says something that I totally agree with. Yeah, we're sitting here complaining about it, but this game is going to sell. Oh, we're still gonna buy uh, but I'm not. Play it. Oh, yeah. That's what I was going to say. Who, I'm not deterring who's sales. This game's going to break records. Who's going to pick it up? Yeah, I mean, no. Pick it up. I'm not saying that yeah. this is not going to sell. I'm just saying for me playing it, that's the roughest I've seen in a beta. Like, right. I never seen right. so many glitches. I'm like, oh, man. Whoa, what? I, I was all looking forward yeah, to playing it, it, and I'm like, oh, my God. This feels, like, recycled. But, but I, right. This is not polished. This game is going to sell. I felt like short of the some of the yeah, glitches that you so, encountered maybe so. some of the glitches you encountered uh Jez aside I remember having the exact same feelings when I played the beta of of Cold War I thought the yeah. lighting was off I thought some of the shooting was glitchy I thought some of the just the level I thought some of the levels were meh mm-hmm. and I was like now I now you know again you know Monday morning quarterback I will say Cold War's maps are better than what I've you know experienced so far in Vanguard but again I'm looking forward to Vanguard for you play through. You're gonna play through the the campaign, whatever. That's yeah. fine. Call of Duty World uh, War Two had a great campaign. Like that campaign was good. The World War Two campaign, I oh thought yeah, was pretty good. Yeah. That wasn't bad. That wasn't bad. I I do think that the uh, Champion Hill. I don't know if you guys played it or not. I didn't I think like that's it. That's gonna be. I didn't. Like you didn't it. like it? Nah, I wasn't a fan of it. I didn't like the Champion. Hill. I like. But yeah, I don't like know, the drops reason, it was just stuff. I maybe I didn't have a team like a good. Was team that was that the uh, was that the two on two thing? Yeah, two v two. Yeah. Nah, that was but, trash. Yeah, that mode was trash. Yeah, I, nah, I, I, I like it. I don't know. For it's fast paced. Uh, it's 2v2. It's quick. Uh, and, and you 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 got the <laughs> buy in <laughs> rounds. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, they don't want to hear about the con. It's fine. I got to be honest with you. There's there's people who still say, right? There's probably people on the show right now that are listening to this and say, you know, well, I think Battle Royale is trash. Well, that's fine. Mm. I know. I, mean, I know. I know. Um, how many years can they, we look forward to des- uh, uh, domination and capture the flag and, and search and destroy? We've been playing those things for what? The better part of over a decade. I, I agree, so, Mooch. They, yeah. they need to put some new game modes. Or they you know, do. Mooch, they do. I've always, I've always said that. Some of the game modes they've had in previous Call of Duty, they just need to they need to be a standard. The sticks and stones, the one in the chamber, need to be a standard. Don't say, "Oh, we're bringing this back." That needs to be a standard right. in Treyarch's That's temple right. or Call of Duty temple because they're actually good game modes. Because I, I don't know if you know this, you probably do. Like Cold War, they they brought back like six and stones, the one in the chamber, and yes, it was just a did. game mode, and it was there yeah. for a while. And I was like, "Why do you switch these game modes out instead of keeping them here?" And I don't know if they're like, oh, we're just trying to see what works. But I, I agree with you. Like, some of these game modes just need to be a standard. Like, keep these game modes here. 
incentivize these game modes and, and make people play imagine it. now imagine this and let me let me throw this at you frog like, tell me if you're feeling this like in all honesty i can if you, if you don't like uh, champion hill i respect that my my thing is this it's a new idea it's a new mode right mm -hmm. and imagine if they can grow on it right now all of a sudden instead of duos there's trios the map is larger right yes now now I, hear me out right this is what i'm mm -hmm. trying to say now what you're doing is you're able to get a fast-paced war zone into a mode that's just in your multiplayer mode and it'll like get more Warzone people Junior. to come in. Right? Warzone Jr. Yeah. And Ooh. not like Resurgence, the, that mini map that they gave us. No, that, no, that's no, no. Garbage. I know what you mean. But yeah. this is a fast paced, right now, all of a sudden, trios. They have squads. They have, you know, it's it's awesome, man. This is a, it's a step. I look at it as a stepping stone. I'm like, we've been right. waiting a long time for a new mode. This mode, I'm just saying this much. I'm not saying you guys have to buy into what I'm saying, but it's the right step. To get us, like when people you are like, play you randoms play on it? I don't want to play domination. I don't want to play. You know what I mean? I'm so did tired you play of a randoms on that mode. Kill though? confirmed. Did you play a randoms on it? Did you team up with it with that mode, Mooch? Who me? Yeah. Did you play a no, random? I, I teamed up. I teamed up with friends. I, I did oh, okay. play a random once, See, but that I, I teamed would up with friends. Make it better. I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I think the best way to play Call of Duty also too. is team up. I don't like playing Call of Duty when I play a randoms. It doesn't feel right. Back in the day, yes, but now if I can't play with my group of friends, they play Call of Duty. I don't want to play Call of Duty. Same with Battlefield. I can respect I, that. Yeah, yeah, I don't want. I don't like playing yeah, absolutely in any shooter and, and Jez, game. And Jez, the whole landscape of Champion Hill changes when you're able to communicate. I'm sure it does. And, yeah, because that's yeah. why I, I mean, didn't naturally, play right? It. I mean, yeah. nothing there's groundbreaking. Yeah. I'm just saying, like that's that that does affect the way that you would play that mode, and it, it it just does. I mean, it's the same way if you I it threw you in the duos in Warzone. Yeah, exactly. You're like, I can't even talk to this guy. I got no idea. That where guy's he's running he around. I'm chasing him. He's in him. farmland. Yeah. I don't know where he went. You nah, know? I mean, I, yeah, I just, so. I think the thing is for me is that I'm really just really turned off with the World War II. I just don't right. like those guns. I, I, I agree. I'm but just the that, least of my, yeah, yeah like the grenades, the bouncing Betty. Like, I'm just like, ugh, like I yeah, just don't, I'm it doesn't, you. I'm not really feeling it. And that's it's probably where a lot of it's coming from. It's just, it's just not fair. I do have a question for a, a All right, Chris one for a question, then we're moving anybody, on quick. New segment. Yeah, we'll anybody that's played this on Xbox, because I heard the Xbox version was having a lot of it's problems. It's the Matrix. The Xbox version is like the program Matrix. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I played it. And my I played it. I played it. I played it. Link was in the Matrix. Yeah, Link. I played both versions. Yeah, I got the, the PS5 and the Series X. So um, I could see the, the, what I saw in the Xbox version had a lot of frame drops. Like the frame mm. and the stuttering was pretty severe in my experience it wasn't every game and then the artifacting and stuff the game has a lot of graphical glitches on the xbox version but this is a beta or whatever but right. on the playstation version the game did run smooth i mean the frame rate wasn't dropping and stuff like that so um i had a much better experience on the playstation um with this game i just wanted to try it out on the xbox but i would would not play it on there anyway but right. um it it's it has a lot of a. Uh, stuttering and frame dropping and sometimes there's artifacting and graphical glitches um this is not the day one patch this isn't the launch code but it has some, a lots of problems on the xbox yeah, on the series I, x I, I played on the series x now i don't know about I, the other I xbox said, uh, somebody said on twitter that it, you know they posted a video and they said hey this game has a lot of problems on the series x and i was like hey it has just as many problems on the ps5 and I don't know, some guy just called me a fucking clown because, <laughs> you know, he was like, you're a he's critic. Like, hey, hey, clown. He's you like, had no, some problems? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't really yeah, have any problems. Like, he was like, what, you have problems in your PS5? He's like, it doesn't have any problems in the PS5, clown. Not uh -oh. knowing that's where I'm from. Watch it. And I'm like, dude, this is not, a, this not a fanboy it. thing. This is like. Get the like grindhounds on him, frog. It, it, it just blew my mind. Like, I was talking about a game. He made it a console war thing. I was like, look. I know it has problems on the PS5 because that's where I played it. But, and I said, the people who are posting it on the Series X, they're obviously having some of the same problems, but a little bit worse. But regardless, it has problems across the board. So we as gamers should say, hey, look, you know, Activision, this game has problems across the board. Not, well, it plays better on PS5 than Xbox. I'm like, what the, what are you doing? Like, Yo, if the game doesn't play I think, well, frogs, frogs, I, think I think that there's been way more reported issues on the Xbox uh, oh, version okay. what i've been seeing i've been seeing a lot of people uploading footage with some of the issues that i experienced um on the xbox and i've played on the playstation haven't had any issues like that um not saying there aren't issues but uh the xbox version by far 
I've been yeah, seeing people issues. reporting way more issues. Yeah, because oh. I know when I played on PS5, right? issues. yeah. Did you try so it? his move? No, no, no. After I saw all those graphical issues, I was like, and, I, and isn't it, is this free or is it pre order? It's free. See, no, no, it's, it's free. Really it's free. free. See, but but see what I'm saying. Kiss move saw the same thing I saw. It was a matrix. Like the same the same problems it was, it was having on Series X. I was having some of the same problems on PS5 where it was glitching. Like I couldn't see my weapon. It was a stupid stuff. And I was like, what the hell? It and when I went to go say, I was like, yeah, this has the same problems. This guy was like, you're a fucking clown. It has no <laughs> problems on the PS5. I'm like, that's great. That was the first time I've seen Call of Duty have like a tech issue. Though. Yeah, exactly. that's what I was saying, dude. But anyway, no more Call of exactly. Duty. Talk. We're gonna, I got it. Harry, yeah. Harry Johnson has a question. What's coming out on Xbox today? Uh, I don't know. Uh, um, I Smooth. mean, they're, they're, uh, what's coming out? A game is coming out. Yeah, I guess I don't know today. if there's any major uh, thing. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, but thank you, Harry Johnson. We'll, we'll get back to you on the research. Speaking about games that uh, that are uh, anticipated coming out, but is proved to be false, and I don't know why people ran tons of stories with that NVIDIA leak, and we're going to run through this real quick because I have no time for this. I got to get my new sound clip for that one. But uh, so basically that NVIDIA GeForce Now leak showed God of War 3 and Santa Claus the movie and <laughs> Crisis Gears 6 and Forza Motorsport 8 and 9, 10, 11, Goat Simulator 25, uh, Halo 5 Guardians and all this other stuff. And and everybody's like Titanfall three is coming and all this, it, dude. It's right here. Nvidia came out and said those are. Nvidia is aware of the unauthorized public game list. We're both real. They're both released and or speculative titles used only for internal tracking and testing. Inclusion on the list is neither confirmation nor an announcement of a game. Uh, Nvidia took immediate action to remove all access. So. But it did. It, they did announce those two project names, and that was the one thing. Project, oh, what was it? Uh, project uh, Oxide, uh, Oxide Games, or Project? Um, oh shit, what were they? It's on my list. They called the, uh, uh, what, what? In Exiles working on? Yeah, Project Cobalt. Indius and Cobalt. Yeah. So uh, those, I guess, those are real, but they're just project names for placeholders that they put in there. But yeah. anybody use GeForce now? I used it a little bit on back in the day, but not anymore. But we're gonna go to now. Everybody here, we got the. We're gonna be. We're gonna we'll spice things up. We got a new segment here. Let's see. I've been working on this stuff, so there might be some technical glitches, but we're gonna work on this. So guys, here comes a brand new segment. Buck Roger, you're gonna like this one. That's all I'm saying. Here we go. We are going to the exclusive grinds my gears pool house. Let's go. All right, let's see if I get this thing here working here. We got the pool. Here it is. And I see if the chat, I, my chat has to go behind it and uh, in front of it. Eh, it's fine. We'll leave it as it is. But this is the Grinds Pool House. We said the pool was coming at 1K. We got a new segment. And this is What Grinds Your Gears. And it's featuring a brand new feature. Let's see if I get this thing working. I've been messing around with this, guys. And um, let's see if I have my thing right here. Buck Roger, you see him diving in the pool. He was jiving in. We got Buck Roger. <laughs> Everybody likes the music. Yes, I did some crazy music for that one. But we are here at the pool house, and the pool house comes with a new feature. We are going to – let me make sure I have it up here, guys. I'm sorry. I really have the uh, – how's my thing? There is the – hold the phone. I had it here. Uh-oh. Where is my new feature? No. Well, we're gonna add it then, because I don't know where the hell it went. Now it's coming in hot. Now I'm my my shit's coming in hot right now. Here we go. We have in the pool house. Even though I set this up, we have the brand new grinding gear. Again, I know you're gonna complain about the text on here. I've tried playing it for hours trying to get it on there, but this has a spinning wheel, and we're gonna try to. Hold on, bear with me for a second here. This is the grinding gear. So today's topic is what grinds your gears. We're going to spin it for each of our guests, and each of our guests will have to say what grinds their gears about the topics on this list. There are topics on here, and on this uh, list we have the topic of Xbox, 
topic of PlayStation, what greases your gears, uh, and also PC. What grinds your gears about PC. But you got to be careful. There is a whammy. The Phil Ness is on this wheel. If you land on Phil Ness, (laughs) you will be skipped. And nobody is going to hear about it. And we'll be happy about the stuff that you didn't talk about. So you will be Phil Ness and you will be out of there. But we're going to go through here. So the first one we'll do, actually, we'll start with with Merc. Merc, I'm going to spin the wheel and I'm going to let you know. Let's see if this thing works. What grinds your gears? Let me know what it gives me. I'll let you know. You got... Oh, man. <laughs> he got Phil Nest. Merck got Phil Nest. Oh, shit. Hey, Dude. listen. It, would, it wouldn't happen any other way, man. <laughs> Merck got... Oh, Jesus. Hey, the first yeah, spin. I, I swear. Right, right when you said that, I said, oh, that's the one You got the whammy. And wait, we got a... We got, the whammy. The whammy stop. I <laughs> got Xbox. Merck got Phil Nest. Merck, maybe we'll give you a, a, a bonus spin here. We'll, right, we'll give you a bonus, bonus spin. Your first spin. We'll, I'll give you a, a, a second chance. Right, yeah, right. Now, that, that Phil Ness, he is wild around here, so we just got to make sure that uh, no whammy. So you already got the whammy here. We're going to spin it again. Let's see what Merck gets. What grinds your gears about? What is that pink? That is the PC. What grinds oh. your gears about PC, Merck? Nice. I got to I mean... I mean, it's the it's the superior platform. Uh, nah, this I'm, is I'm, what grind your gears. This is not the creases. You didn't get the bonus question. Yeah, look, you guys grind your gears. I'll, t- I'll, t- I'll, t- I'll tell you what it is. I'll tell you what it is. Don't so, take advantage. I'll spin it again. We'll we'll reinvoke the Phil Ness. <laughs> no, no, I'll, I'll do I'll do I'll, I'll do a PC. That's fine. Okay. okay the the one th- there is there is one thing that that bothers me about PC gaming when it comes to certain multiplayer games. Mm-hmm. Right, like we have a uh, you know in a little group that we call the troubleshooters. Right, we have a little inside joke that we call them the PC nerds. Mm-hmm. They like to pull up with their little keyboard and mouse and ruin like some of these multiplayer games. <laughs> uh, so I probably think like when it comes to multiplayer games, like for me when when I first got back into PC gaming, like back in like 2015, um, the one thing that I always kept consoles around for was always to play like you know Call of Duty, those kind of things. Right, because mm-hmm. uh, obviously you do you do see like a lot of cheaters like on the PC platform as far as multiplayer games. Now, when the whole mm-hmm. thing that crossplay started occurring, now that started giving me that 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 allowed me to spend less time playing multiplayer games on console and more so on the PC. I always I always found myself kind of gravitating to playing those multiplayer games on console. Um, but even then, even then, it's still an issue today where where you get a lot of these PC players that they bring in the cheaters and, you know, and the aim bots and that kind of thing. It kind of ruins the experience. If there's one thing about PC gaming that grinds my gears is that, mm. man, is the cheating in the, che- the cheating in multiplayer games. Yes, I agree. I, I, I do agree with that. And the grind is all getting wild in the chat. But now we will do the next spin. Mooch, you are yes. next. We're going to all spin right. for you. Let's see what you get. You are going to get what grinds your gears about. Oh, is that Phil Ness? He got Phil Ness. I got Phil Ness? <laughs> you got Phil Ness. He got you too, Mooch. Jesus, Phil Ness is running wild tonight, man. He won't let us get through this segment. All right, well, we'll give uh, – well, Mooch, I, I'm excited about the stuff you, were, you weren't going to tell us. So what are you going to tell us? Uh, I guess he got Phil Ness. <laughs> Great. All right. Next spin goes to – no, I'll give Mooch one more spin. He's a special guest again. First time we give them two spins. We'll give two them, Link, spins. Link yes. you're not getting two spins. Link, you get Phil Ness, you get Phil Ness. Nobody's going to care what you have to say. <laughs> All right, next one. Here we go. Mooch gets the bonus spin. And what grinds your gears about – oh, you get – what greases your gears? What do you like huh? about game? Like, is there anything that you really like and you want to highlight about anything? Uh. Jeez, it doesn't anything, even have huh? to be about gaming. It could be about a new device you bought, like an oven or something like that. I don't know. What no, no, your I mean, I, I'm gonna keep. It, I'm gonna keep it to gaming because the minute you're on a gaming podcast, you should say anything besides gaming. You'll watch the the viewer count will drop. That, the grinders understand. They know where this thing goes. I told them about my <laughs> Batesian. They're all excited. They like that. That grease. No, I mean, <laughs> try to think here. Just uh, it's. I, I guess I'm. You know what I'm really relieved that I'll, I'll say this, and it's just something I kind. I, I brought it up quickly on Friday. I'll bring it up today. I'm really glad that we're at the point we are in this generation where we are with Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 because 
you guys got to feel the way I feel, right? As exciting as new consoles and new technology is, which, I mean, we're all there day one, or we try to get it day one. I know we had the scalpers and other things going on this past, mm -hmm. you know, uh, yeah. pandemic, etc. But I'm glad we're at the point right now where we're just about to start to turn the corner as we go into 2022. I know that we still have a lot of games next next year that are still going to be cross-gen. But I, I love as we get into the second full-term year, the third year, and you start to see the true power of the machines coming true. Here we've all gone out. Everyone spent a lot of their hard-earned money, you know, $500 for a PS5, $500 for a Series X. Maybe you, maybe if you're, you're Merc, you went ahead and you grabbed a, a 3080 or a 3090 if you get your hands on it, whatever. My point yep. being is, is that you want to start seeing this technology that you spent a lot of money on start to give you the product that you've been promised. And mm. I think we're finally getting to that point right now. Uh, lots of games. I mean, you heard us, right? Your whole beginning segment, Jez, was just... You know, what are you playing? And we all of us yeah. had so much, whether even people who don't even have Death Loop are so enamored by what's going on and they're I so know. into the story and what's that. So I guess if I got to go ahead and say that, I mean, I was prepared for, you know, anything is kind of spun there. But I, I would <laughs> say that that's what's kind of exciting at this point as we go into this holiday season is there's a lot of games to play. And uh, we're finally starting to get the uh, the value out of these uh, the thousand dollars we all plunk down a yeah, year, ago. especially early next year. We're gonna get some good stuff too. Absolutely, like, yeah, wrapped up this oh, one. Oh yeah. Well, thank you for that. So now we're gonna spin smooth, kid smooth. You still yeah, you're gonna get that spin. Yeah. Here he goes. Uh, hopefully he has the anti Phil Ness charm on, so he doesn't get Phil Ness. Oh man. Let's see. Here we go. Kid smooth spin. <laughs> now he get. Well, we'll see what he gets. Kid smooth gets. Oh, what grinds your gears about Xbox? Kid Smooth. Oh, oh, no. Dude, I, this is oh, not rigged. Wait, wait, wait a minute. It's not rigged. It's, it's not rigged. I'm starting to think this is rigged. No, it's it not. Be, it's yeah. random. I set it up to random. How does Merc get PC? Like, yeah, just, hey, man. It's the wheel. It's the grinding gear, man. I don't No control. No control. Um, <laughs> um, What grinds my gears about Xbox? Uh unnecessary gaming droughts and uh uh this their new age marketing um when it comes to their games they mm. have a lot of Thank games you. coming and they don't it's like this is the time where they should be boasting but their their marketing technique isn't what it was back during the 360 and even early xbox one i don't feel like xbox is like doing their job and like telling me hey halo infinite is coming and shout hey, out kids they, move thank not, you to move i need to yes. be i feel like they need to I, I want them to sell me games and they're not they're not doing that job and i feel like it's the, it, that's part of the reason why some of their games aren't performing as well because like a game like psychonauts you know uh they could have touted and big that game up and literally made it seem like it was an exclusive because remember they didn't even right. hand out review copies for the playstation version or anything like yep. that yeah. so they literally could have took over tv and you know, banners and, and just kept throwing it down people's throat. Like, you know, Psychonauts play on Xbox or play even play on Game Pass and stuff like that on TVs and stuff. And they didn't put the marketing dollars and they had an opportunity to like put that game forward. And I'm not seeing the same hype. Like, for example, with September, uh, during the launch to Halo 4 and Halo 5, we were seeing oh, commercials yes. like 90 days in the game. Oh, and yes. did that. So, Mm -hmm. So yes. um, I, I don't like this whole like, uh, well, it's here and it's going to be like a tweet on like Twitter from their Game Pass account. I, I, that I don't they're not doing their games like justice. And I feel like they have some good stuff down the line. I think they need to put some of those, uh, you know, billions and billions of dollars that they got left to spend and put it in their marketing um, internally. I feel like as a gamer, as an Xbox gamer, I do want to know that, like, you know, they're putting these games forward from a marketing standpoint. Um, and I think that's been one of their biggest achille heels uh, um now that they're get they're getting the games and the game the marketing has just been like kind of like pitiful um lately so yeah well thank my, you uh, yeah, well the one thing i say what did you think about that acquisition stuff i didn't see you didn't uh, like there's that stuff was kind of going crazy over yeah, the weekend I, um yeah because we were supposed to get like uh like, like today i think it was the anniversary of like yeah. the bethesda yeah, one today, I think. yeah that's all it was, was the anniversary but the thing is is that people gotta we can't treat like bookmark dates that something happened i know it's so weird same exact mm -hmm. thing is gonna happen the the next year but it's i don't know like and you know i buy into the hype you know ever since the xbox everybody was talking about it on man. that shopping spree in 20 18 we just assume like uh they're buying every month they're gonna <laughs> announce something and stuff like that and so now you know bethesda's 
you know, not enough. But yeah, it's like these, these rumors. I can't stand these damn rumors because I when I come to think about the Bethesda thing, I wasn't anticipating that. So that's why it was a shocker when Beth, that I did not, I, I couldn't put like a rumor or connect a rumor. Nobody was preparing us for like a rumor. It just happened. It was like, boom. And then it was like, oh shit, this happened. Mm-hmm. And so now I, if nobody could predict that, who's like, what makes you think some, some random dudes on Twitter is going to be able to predict like a Square Enix, a take two or some shit like that. I, I know just, it was going crazy. I just gotta man. stop buying into some of these hypes and shit like that. Like, I know. And also, it, too, we gotta see the 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 repercussions of what they purchased already. Like, I think there's a lot to those studios to start showing, and like, it doesn't yeah. show the appreciation for what they already did and yeah, you know yeah. that they managed it. Uh, but we'll get into the booty talk after this one. But anyway, uh, Buddy Cactus says here Phil Ness is playing with his trusty booster doll. And isn't cream in the Xbox donuts, folks? Get to the job. Oh, 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 oh. Pause Time on that. Donut. One. Buddy Cactus. <laughs> Holy oh my shit. God. All right, now we're going to go to Link. Now, Link, you get one spin, and then we'll go to Frogs. One spin for Link. There we go, Link. Get ready. I'm going to get Phil Nest. We're running out of time. He has to get Phil Nest. He got a grand and gives him an Xbox. Keep it short, Link. We, we do this every week. <laughs> <laughs> what grand and gives him an Xbox? Oh, he did get Phil Nest. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. He's not him. answering. <laughs> yeah, I think Link had to drop out. Oh, all right. Well, Frog, we're going to spin for you. Sorry, Link. Thanks for coming by. He got Phil Nest. Frog goes. Frog got Phil Nest. There you go, Frog. You should have let me take Link's turn. No, please. no. That's it. We. I'm excited yeah, about the stuff that you weren't going to say. I know, Thank I you again, Frog. Get you I got. I I'll, I'll, will play you one of Phil's famous quotes here means when I think about Xbox, I'm going to think about quality games. We have work to do there. We haven't done our best work over the last few years with our first okay. album. And he's trying to I'm a lot trying to use the phone! You've been, uh, you've been um, boosted. <laughs> they got you boosted. But there goes the segment. We'll do some stuff with the wheel. And uh, hopefully everybody likes this segment of the Grinds Pool House featuring the Grinding Wheel. And with that, we will go to the final touch point of here. And that will be as we wrap this thing up. Where the hell is my get rid of? I gotta fix it. And, and and that was an impromptu wheel too. Let me oh. make sure my uh, for yeah, because my original wheel that I worked on, oh man, it's starting my video again. Oh, there it is. I named it the grinding gear. I was looking for wheel. Oh, I got Phil Ness. Jesus, my goodness, <laughs> that was my ass. Sorry, I had it there. I named it the grinding gear. I'm so dumb, stupid. Let's see here. Uh, where the hell's my background? I want to get rid of the uh, the pool house here. Sorry, Buck. We're leaving the pool. We're leaving the pool again. Back into the grind house, and here we are. All right. So the last topic here. We have the last thing here. We're gonna go on the the thing. The last couple. Uh, yeah, there's a, a merger of the stuff. Like the whole the Xbox acquisition. We kind of uh, you know alluded to that, um, and also to that PS5 update uh, with the SSD. Did anybody upgrade their SSD quickly? New, new. I did. I did yes, a video I of it did. and forgot that little uh, metal thing. <laughs> I gotta go back to school for another two years. There's a spacer <laughs> that's underneath the friggin' thing that I didn't put underneath the, the SSD. So I gotta go back to school. My four year degrees work shit. I need two more years to do because I forgot the the friggin' spacer. Yeah, which which one did you buy though, Joe? Oh, I got the. Uh, oh, here it is. The. Uh, the Aurus, the Aurus, the Aurus, the um. Gigabyte. Hello, hold on. Is Which one are people hearing are the best? I'm hearing the Samsung one is good. I got the Western Digital uh one yeah, terabyte the, with the heat sink. Oh, That's the black the okay. uh, Western Digital. Yeah, I got the the oh, uh, yeah. the Aurus Gen Four Seven Thousand SSD. That's a gigabyte, ain't it? Yes, gig uh, one gig, yeah. yeah. And it's running at around sixty six or sixty five speed. You one gig? You mean one terabyte? One terabyte. Yeah. One yeah. Terabyte. No, no. Oh, I'm, I'm one mean, gigabyte. gigabyte. I think produces Aurus. That's what oh, I meant. Gigabyte oh, oh, gigabyte. gigabyte. Oh, no, right, this right, is yeah. just an Aurus Brand. one. Oh, oh, yeah, gigabit. Yeah. yeah no. Yeah. Yeah, this. Oh, yeah, Gigabit does do this one. Yeah, this one had the built-in heat. I heat was sink. thinking it, it was funny. I was doing the whole like. I, so I was I was fortunate enough because uh, I picked up a Series X, you know, when it launched, and then uh, family and friends were like, "Oh, you know, we'll get you." So I ended up getting the external Seagate one terabyte for the Series X last year. I actually got it when when the console came out or shortly thereafter. I believe it was Christmas time. 
And uh, so I, I, I was, you know, for the past year now, I've been kind of just beating games and then deleting them and then putting a new game on there. But I think I'm at a point right now where I'm ready to to go ahead and and uh, purchase one for the PS5 as well. So I mean, it's you get to a point, especially if you're like me and you kind of like the Warzone stuff. I mean, that Call of Duty they they eat up a lot of yeah. your yeah, it's like 100 your hard drive, and it's like it's just it, it, you just they 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 know they got you. But I will say there's there's the competitive pricing that, that that's going on. You wait wait till the holiday. There, some of these that were we were hearing are going to be two hundred twenty dollars on the PlayStation Five. I'm seeing some of them already drop down to one hundred seventy nine dollars. Yes, yes. So Mooch, you know, you are so you are you are spot on on that. That that when they first showed these uh, SSDs, even with the heat sinks, they were yeah. super expensive. Yeah, they and were. You're right. They're so like I, I I predict by the end of next year these things will be dirt cheap, dirt cheap. Well, yeah, at least, yeah, at least under, dropping at in least price. under under one hundred and fifty bucks, you know. Yes, yes, you know, easy. And then you probably and also I did hear also when you're speaking about the Xbox one that there was there was something more a rumor about that they're coming out with a five hundred gig one, I thought. Yeah, they want to have a they want to have a cheaper price, a smaller a cheaper one. SKU. Because they need but it for the smaller. S, uh, I mean booster. it's Yeah, PCIe five is about to be announced too. Oh damn. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Now I don't think I think something that a lot of people aren't talking about, if I'm not mistaken, let let and if I'm mistaken, correct me. The PS5 uh, with the uh, the M.2, it's allowed to run. What is it? Ten gigs? Is it? Uh, I'm not for sure. What did it say? Uh, the speed is. What was the max speed? Because I remember uh, watching that conference. It's and, it, uh, the max speed they wanted. You have to have at least six thousand. It has to be a Gen Four, so it has to be I think greater than five, right. six thousand. But then the max you have is a four terabyte size. SSD, I think that's the well. Max what I'm size. talking about the run, not not the not the size. Oh, the I'm speed. The run speed. Oh, I don't remember. Yes, yeah. I, don't remember I remember speed. them saying something about 10 gigs. If I'm not mistaken, oh, they said that's what they're pushing for. That's what they're pushing for. If I'm not mistaken, when we watched what Sony unveiled before, like after Mark Cerny talked about it, and they showed, they said, "Hey, you know, it can run up to you know this," but they they're they're trying to push it to be up to 10 gigs. That's their and I was like, "Holy crap! That's a lot. That's a lot." Uh, so I, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I think uh, both consoles are in good space, you know, uh, as far as uh, read and write speed, as far as what they can do. And I think that as the years go on, probably within the second, maybe two and a half, third year, you're probably going to get these read and write speeds. We're going to get games that are almost instantly loading. And I think that's what we're going to see on both uh, platforms. I really do think we're going well, to see I'll that. Well, I'll tell you, it, this transferring stuff between the SSDs is super fast. And uh, also, to like, uh, the one thing is you can't store your photos and video, like, to this one. But um, mm -hmm. you could, uh, you know, put downloading games, like, just having that full space, too. Like, nothing's formatted or anything. Like, you format it, but it doesn't use a lot of the terabyte size. So you have, like, a full terabyte just to move stuff around and... Yeah, it, it's great, and you could dictate to the PlayStation where which drive you want it to install to the main, the external, or for PS4 games, you have all three of them to decide from. You, if you have an external uh, SS, you have an external hard drive hooked on through USB. You could, you could, you have all three to choose from. So PS5 games could go to either one of the two drives, the SSDs, or you could have the uh, PS4 ones run to all three of them. So you know, and any uh, takeaways from the update? You know, I did like the. Um, the uh, I tried that PS Now thing where you could stream now in 1080p. It definitely runs, uh, you know, clearer on there. Like I want to, because I know they added that to it. I want to see how the PS Now you could just change the resolution from 720p 60 to 1080p 60 streaming on that. And then the other thing was moving the power button. Remember there were big issues with people how to turn oh, off my PS4, yeah. <laughs> a PS5. I mean, ah. Yeah. Now you can move the power button now closer, so you don't have to go all the way over. No, the up the update they gave the other day was it was a really nice update. I think it was. I mean, there's still other things I think we need to that they they need to update. But I thought that yeah, the really. um the vertical trophy list is yes much I love much it. appreciated. I love yes, it. I love I, it. I do like the movement of the control panel. That's mm -hmm. kind of nice. I mean, I, I I don't know. I you listen. Everything's muscle memory, right? So right. Like yeah. people used to complain about the Xbox One. In 2013, like it's the worst UI I've ever seen in my life, and, and don't get me wrong, I I understand coming from the 360, it was cumbersome. But oh, after two months with the Xbox One, I also got muscle memory to where everything was there. So now I've 
gone ahead and, they and updated configured it on, yeah. control center, <laughs> and now I'm going to the ro- where they used to be. So it's going to take me like two weeks to get used to. That's the why I, I didn't them. move it. You're right. I did. I was like, I'm so yeah. used to moving the power button all the way there. Like if I don't want it down, I moved right the, the power bottom. button to the extreme left. Yeah, uh, I I kept. I moved home into the second yep. to the left. Then That's I moved what I did. my. Right, that I put friends, and then I put yep. my my profile. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> Harry Johnson did, right? just says, you know, so. shout out to Harry Johnson yeah. for two bucks. He says, just got me the four terabyte SSD for nine hundred and seventy five dollars. What the fuck? Holy crap! Jesus! Oh Wait, who God. said that? Harry Johnson in Holy the chat. Crap. Harry, just send me a, a code for uh, Kina, please. That's Jesus. all, man. Yeah, <laughs> very simple. Thank you. He's putting these. You know, you know Mooch. There. You know, Mooch, you said something, on, and I, and I, I want to just kind of hit on. I don't know if anybody's using this with their PS5 with the update, but one thing that I tend to do, like, I play my games. I'm not, like, a trophy whore, right? But Defense there are nine. some games, like, if I've gotten, like, you know, 70 80%, I'm like, damn, there's a couple of trophies I want to get. One thing I will say that's really cool that I think Xbox did, but mm-hmm. Sony just did with this update is, they allow you to pin like five trophies to the side. Trophy tracker. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh, that's so. Yeah, because Xbox had that. I think that. with the overlay, right? X- yeah, yes. And see, yes. that's one thing I think Xbox did really <laughs> well. There's some yeah. things about the Xbox overlay, and you know, I still love the snap feature on Xbox, even though they got rid of it. I think that was genius, and it, basically, all this is to me is kind of like a snap feature for trophies or whatever else you want to put on because. Me and me and Jazz have shoot. We're we're playing games and we're watching YouTube at the same time. I think that there are a lot of things that I you like know, were innovative. Oh, excuse me. Jesus, there were a lot of things. That, <laughs> What's up, Kick? Oh shit! Oh, oh. Yo, the grind hounds are out. Door. Oh, it's Phil Spencer. Dude, yo, frogs, dogs. When they go wild, that means that there's people at the front door trying to sell them Game Pass. He's just the dogs on him. Yeah. <laughs> The grind hounds. Uh, get them. What I was going to say is I think that, I think mm. that Microsoft had a really uh, – the, the, the Snap feature was really genius. I did like Snap. They they really – they promoted TV, 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 and there were so many other things you could do with it that they didn't promote. And I think now that PlayStation is kind of doing some a semi kind of what I call Snap, I do like the fact that I can post five trophies there that I want to work on when I'm playing Split Gate or when I'm playing the Tours – when I'm playing the meat, no, not the medium. When I'm playing like the new Alan Wake game coming out for PlayStation first time ever, there are games that like I'm gonna be able to snap my five trophies and progressively kind of work to those that are easier. And I think that that's really cool. Um, I know we're getting close to their best show, so I do I do want to give a big shout out to uh, Microsoft for announcing their Halo Xbox. If anybody can, oh my God, can knows a way that. Look, I'm just going to say this because I'm looking forward to the PS5. I'm looking forward. He wants that it, thing, man. He wants look, it so bad. There's, look, there's two options. Either I'm going to get another PS5, one of the two. Yo. My wife has one, my son has one. The one that Merck, you. the one that Merck hooked me up with, <laughs> I gave to my son. You know, cuz he you know, he graduated and went to college. So my deal was I'm going to get another PS5 or I'm going to get the Halo Xbox Series S. If I get a Halo Xbox Series S, I will play all my multiplayer exclusively there from 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 this point going forward. And be, and and it's, I'm such a ha- huge Halo fan. I think that when Microsoft announced that console, that was the one thing thing out of that show that a lot of, a lot of people didn't talk about. Like that made me wanna own an Xbox Series X, like more than anything, more than any game, because I'm such a, ha- a huge Halo fan. And so I've been trying to get one. I've been going on the website site and you know those bots freaking go on there i don't know if kids move got one but no, I my do. whole thing is <laughs> yeah i want if i get one of those consoles I, my multiplats are going to be all on xbox and my exclusive only on playstation from this point forward and it's not even about fanboy it's just i love halo so much that i would i would sacrifice well this is your week frog uh, you yeah, can go I into mean, best buy yeah, is supposed to be having yeah, best buy, xbox series dude, x is on thursday dude, i'm gonna stand out there early in the morning and I'm hoping I can get one. If I can't get one, because I want a Halo exclusive one. That's the one I I don't really care about the Series X, right? But if I can get a Halo Series X, I'm good. Like I'll play. It, all looks, my it looks really there. nice. Yeah, we I got tried. an awesome oh super God, chat dude. from King Thrash Gaming for five bucks. Can a code for Jez? Yo, I'm typing in right now. It's called Cod D's Nuts. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, but for real, like, if anybody, if Thanks, anybody man. Knows, knows any way I can get an Xbox Series X Halo edition, 
uh, hit hit me up on Twitter, man, because uh, on Ad Frogs, because like, <laughs> and when I say I'm a huge <laughs> Xbox fan, I have my original Xbox Halo edition. I have the original Xbox. I got a 360. I got I got two of the Xbox Halo editions, 360 editions. Um, uh, I got the green one, the orange, and I have the uh, the second one they did. I'm I'm a huge Halo fan. Um, shout out also to uh, Sick Humor. I'm a, a huge 2K fan, and, and Sick was selling some of his original OG ESPN uh, 2K5 uh, games, and now I own all of them, and I own uh, 2K2, the last college game they did, and I played it the other day, Sick. Oh, my gosh, man. Bring back college football. Oh, we need oh that. man, I remember that. So the yeah, the oh last thing God. as we go out, you know, this whole acquisition thing, you know, we talked about it earlier, and uh, somebody made this logo here. With the, you subscribe to Game Passes in the news, and then the internet talks about Game Pass and and prices, and then this talks about acquisitions, and then this Kojima's exclusive game, and then they go right back to Game Pass. Like this kind of this loop. Of, of news and rumors, and I think Smooth was definitely talking about it in his Grinders Gears segments about, like, you know, this marketing and stuff. And I do think that, you know, I think that they're, they have some games, you know, with Forza and with Halo. Jesus, I can't believe Halo's coming out, and we don't know that much about it. But it just seemed, and, and I saw this today on Twitter. This is the last thing I wanted to just mention. Um, you know, Jez Corden, uh, you know, and, and other people, well, even, I think even Tim Dog was saying this stuff, too, like, like people were angry that the acquisition news didn't drop, and it just was saying that it might have been about games and people like, and they were calling them out, going like, I think even Tim Dog wrote, he's like, you know, you care more about games and like the, the I care more acquisitions than games, and it just seemed like it just creates this craziness that's going on with like they want this acquisition stuff is just dominating a lot of this Xbox conversation, I think because it's just the year anniversary, but it just seems that, you know, we need to see the produce, the production from what these studios are. And I, and I did some research, um, on what was going on. Remember last, last week I had a, a little bit of a rant, like I always do, but I was asking, where is Matt booty? Where is the booty? So I did some research to find out where the hell is this booty? Do you know the last time Matt Booty tweeted was like 2020, 2019 on his Twitter? Yeah, he, doesn't, yeah, he doesn't tweet like that. He don't, man. man. Where's this booty? Smooth, do you know where the booty is? <laughs> I don't know where this booty is, man. Yeah, he's not like a uh, like a sociable person. Like they put him on camera when needed and whatnot, but he's not like a like a, a Twitter personality. And remember, no, and, he's not. And also, so like. Yeah, he's just not. Yeah, he's just not that. So I really don't like. I don't. I I think I followed him once they. Uh, you know, once I discovered he had a a Twitter. But yeah, he's not. Uh, I don't know. Like I like when Matt. If he does tweet, I don't expect it to be anything like worthwhile. Nah, he's not a Greenberg. Definitely. Like I'm glad that he keeps his mouth shut, but still, like I feel like he should be doing more representation of what the studios like as as a head of their studios yeah. rather than he's too busy clapping his ass <laughs> <laughs> but i don't know where he's clapping dude like i don't know where he is like he oh, you want him to be like a pull like a homer and hall since no tweeting, well no, herman Hulse doesn't even do that either he does a splits no we don't want him to do that he does a splits herman Hulse, like john claude yeah, he's herman like Hulse, you go play the game sometimes yeah. you just shut up man some of these guys at these companies just need to be quiet and let their their product do the talking. Like some, like Herman well, Holt, sometimes he needs to be quiet. Well, yeah, but when he comes out on his thing, like he did do his splits, and he's like, "You go play the games, dude. <laughs> and you play the games anyway on PlayStation." Uh, you know, he did do his thing. But like, I just feel like, I, I like, I, I think Matt, you know, as the head of Xbox, should the head of Xbox Games, the studios, like especially when he has so many studios. You would, th mm -hmm. I think that you know he should be a little bit more kind. Of, hey, pr you know, game's looking good. This is doing that, or I, I don't know. I just feel like he, sh he should be more so, especially more than Phil, mm -hmm. because you know that the, those things. And you know, and I know that you know Herman Holst. He don't tweet too much. He's taking vacation photos on the yacht, you know, with his shirt unbuttoned. But um, you know, booty. I just don't. I was, I was like, when the hell's last booty time? Booty, booty clapped like. In 2019, yeah, you know, like I'm looking at his Twitter and it's like, dude, he don't say anything about what's going on. Like, not even with the Halo stuff. Like, he wasn't even like near that. Maybe nobody wants to be around it. I don't know. But yeah, I just you know, the thing is, is that that acquisition stuff. 
I think that we still need to see what they what they're gonna do. And 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 you know what? One of the things I wanted to say too about the acquisition stuff is I say they did buy a take two. They buy them. What is the first thing that happens? The microphones come out. They go shoved right in Phil's face, and they go, "Is GTA an exclusive?" Is this an exclusive? And he goes, oh, we got some deals. We got this. And then the old, just like the Bethesda stuff. Still to this day, Starfield, people still don't believe it's an exclusive game. And it's just like when you, like, there's just so, I don't know. And and I think Starfield, after it releases, I think maybe in a couple of years, maybe it will go. Never say never. You know, it might go to the other platforms after a couple of years. It might launch exclusively, like they specified, but it might go. Just like we saw MLB go to the freaking Xbox. Who ever thought that was going to have happen? Well, the Uncharted go to PC. But the thing is, is that there are still a certain amount of games that just stay there, and you know that they're going to stay on that on that console. And um, it would be nice to get reassurance that... You know, just w- with that kind of stuff. And I just feel like with the vision that they're doing, more people to play their games, that moving forward, if they do buy these big publishers, they're going to be in, again, another, you know, they got to put their foot down. And then, you know, I don't know. I don't know. It just seems really strange that, uh, you know, I, this this acquisition stuff just gets out of control. Like Sony does a tweet and Microsoft has conferences. And, and I think it's them. I think it's them having to, on E3 stage... And using that as news. And I know, I guess they had to at the time, but I felt like, you know, they made a big deal without any games. They just announced they bought a bunch of studios. And that was an E3 stage show. And I think that's where a lot of this hype and anticipation, and then Bethesda to follow that up, and Obsidian after that. Obsidian was after that thing. So I don't know. I just think that, you know, it's about the games, to play the games. And this acquisition stuff should not precede that. Now, if they get IP and things like that, like they did with Bethesda, good on them. But again, they got a lot of responsibility. And as Spider-Man says, with great responsibility, what do they say? I forget. With great power comes great responsibility. There it is. Yep, that's it. That's the one. But I don't know. Did, did you see that acquisition thing and, and people upset about it with the games? And I just, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. People, people yeah. would be uh, upset about it. I've seen, I seen like... The, the tweets and whatnot, but like I, I, the thing is, I don't like. The thing I don't like in general is those stupid like uh, invisible teases, right? When yes. People tease something, right? Just to tease, and it just becomes okay. And then you get people talking, people get traction, and then the couple days come and go, and nothing happens. It's like, all right, so what's the point? It's like. I just want some of these people who do the like get some balls and just say what it is that you knew. What's the point? Like at the end of the day, that's what a leak is. You just put it out there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> be like, oh, I can't ruin like, my not, inside is right. I can't ruin my yeah, sources. Yeah. I just like, I that's why I couldn't be an uh, inside. I, I'll be a horrible leaker. Cause I just say it was like, fuck it. That's there. it. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. There it is. Like, yeah, I know. Like, and like, don't give me And you're right. And you know what? The same thing. And, and, you know, to be fair, the same thing happened to all these PlayStation events, too. It's coming next Tuesday, next Wednesday. And they're like, came and gone. They're like, PlayStation Inside is like, get the hell out of here. So, yeah. like, and I and I do think, just like what you said, Smooth, I, I agree. Like, I think it's a lot for clout, for attention. And, you know, and, you know, some are legit. And, you know, there are very few people that I would, like, listen to you know, about it. But, like, I just think that, and it just runs wild on Twitter, man. It, it just it, it it flies like wildfire. So bear in mind where you get your news from and stuff. That's why you know don't overreact and, and over anticipate because you're only setting yourself up for disappointment. But does anybody else have any comments on the acquisitions and the games and all that other stuff? Because we're gonna pre-order some some Kenna, and I want to finish up some games. So we want to the Grindhouse huge house party episode. But does anybody have any other no. comments on that? No, great episode, man. I mean, yeah. I, I I really appreciate everybody stopping through. This is uh, um, well overdue, well overdue. Yeah, I think this is awesome, and I want to thank everybody. I'll let everybody do their outros, and then we'll we'll go in uh, you know, reverse here. And I would definitely uh want to thank everybody for awesome gaming grind house like yeah this is the way i wanted to celebrate it i want to thank you guys for making that happen and shout out to the grinders for all you guys support uh it's really been awesome so with that i like to do our outros i'm starting with you the mooch maniac mooch himself Woo! and the mooch maniacs that, that pulled through absolutely 
Yeah, honestly, just great show tonight. A uh, lot of lot of fire, a lot of enthusiasm, and it's the thousand episode, right? I mean, what's technically? The, I don't well, know if it's yeah, it's the, the gaming grindhouse first time for a thousand. Yes, <laughs> that's right. So, I mean, this is it's an honor to be here. Like I said, and I, I watch you every single week. It's great Monday night. I love it. You put it on, I, and like I said, I just think that you're you're a talent, buddy. So keep doing what you're doing. Uh, outstanding panel you put together today. I, the chat's been on fire. So just just a great great show. Appreciate being a part of the celebration, and uh, you can find me at the Mooch Seventy Eight on YouTube and on Twitch. And guys, a lot of I've, I've been saying this for about a month and a half now, and shame on me. You know, it just it takes longer. This sometimes I think everything like Jez was saying tonight. He worked on the the wheel. He worked on the <laughs> pool house, and uh, you know, shit just kind of works sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, so I'm doing I had a lot of here. stuff on my Twitch page. I've done a lot of stuff with actually the entire border. We're doing some of that new stuff. I've got a new show that I'm going to be starting up soon on YouTube that I'm working on, but it all does kick off next week on Twitch. So come on over. It's the Mooch78. Please go over to twitch.com or switch.tv, pardon me, and uh, subscribe because uh, we are going to have one hell of a week next week. Trust me, it's going to be a lot of fun. And Jess, thanks again for having me on, buddy. Hey, anytime. Thank you again. Thank you for setting that time aside. And uh, yo, so, and another awesome OG Planet Xbox Merc 305. Tell them where they can find you and plug your new channel. Amen. Oh, it is the UPP um, channel, but I want you to where? Oh, Merc, yeah, put yourself in the chat. I want you to. Yeah, yeah. I'll gotcha, put gotcha. I'll put you a link for you guys thing in in my description. I'll make sure they get there. But Merc, thank you, man. You. Hey, thank thank you very much for the invite, man. I appreciate being here. Congratulations on the thousand subs, man. That's yeah, a man. It's, it's a nice grind. milestone. <laughs> well, awesome. well, well overdue and well deserved, my friend. Uh, not, I, I I I'm not surprised that it happened. <laughs> <laughs> uh man but again man thank thank you for having me on um man appreciate the rest of the panel and yeah man for if you guys want to find me you can find me at merc 305 at youtube and merc 305 plays on twitch so check me out over there as well and uh yeah man i'll see you guys there thank you thank you mark yep and we go with the ultra preset podcast and, and streaming yeah. over there on the on the youtubes Awesome, yeah. Mark. Yeah, you'll get there, man. No, don't worry. And Merc plays. He plays all. You like the shooting games and competitive shooting, Merc. Absolutely. There, there it is. And he promises. Uh, you guys play Celeste. I don't know if he played it yet. We've been asking for not two yet, years. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not two yet. years, I'm, I'm, Merc. I, 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 have everybody in suspense. For Even that. in Game Pass, we were saying you got to play it and stream it. Merc will actually, not play I actually, Celeste. Believe it or not, I own that game. <laughs> oh my God. Jesus, Merc. I tell you. You got to play a Celeste. Hey, man. And finally, we have first time, man. Yo, Kid Smooth, thank you again for coming on, man, and hanging out with us. OG Planet Xbox. Tell them where they can find you. The best bot. He keeps it real. Man, Kid Smooth, awesome, man. And I'll never forget, man, the time that we ran through packs. We got the, he has that video on his channel, man. Me and him ran through packs. It was like we just did all different, different things. We posed and yeah. took pictures, man. It was awesome time. Smooth. Everybody knows where to find you, but remind them where they can find Kid Smooth. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Kid Smooth, and of course YouTube at Kid Smooth. I actually just posted my Death Loop review on the channel, so nice. check that out. Once again, congrats, Jez, and uh, look forward to you. I'll be look forward to the the two thousand episode. Your second thousand is much faster than the, the first thousand, so I right. look forward to that too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, man. Thank you again. And frogs, tell them where I can find you. Not in Tales of Rise. Yeah, not until the rise. A uh, <laughs> you can find me at Frog Streams on Twitter, uh, at uh, Frogs Up Gaming on uh, YouTube. Man, shout out to Link, shout out to Move, yes. shout out to Kids Move, shout out to uh, Merc, shout out to everybody that uh, yeah. that stopped by. Man, please, please, please uh, like and follow. Uh, you know Merc as he does his thing. Um, I think that's really needed in the PC space. I don't mm -hmm. think there's enough guys uh, and girls that uh, actually, you know, because gaming is gaming, right? Wherever you play, but for him being in the PC space, I think, yeah, it's a little different, but I think gaming is gaming. And I think uh, him and his panel, uh, whoever he decides to pull in there, they'll give you a, a really good um, and significant view of what it's like to kind of like troubleshoot and just go through some of the things uh, through it. He's still trying to convince me to be a PC man, but we'll see. <laughs> oh, um, you know, watch it, man. <laughs> Merck, Merck slips yeah. you the pills. He tries to get you yeah. in there. I don't. Yeah, shout he shows out, you those shout RGB Mooch, lightings. Um, you get you. Uh, I follow Mooch for quite some time. And I, I think Mooch, I, I don't think anybody, if anybody's never told him, is Mooch has like one of those voices that he should be on a radio somewhere. He definitely <laughs> Thanks, has bro. a radio voice. New York City radio. Um, Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't know if anybody ever told you that, man. You have the 
you have like one of the perfect radio voices. Like somebody needs to pull you into the radio and just have you sit there. One hundred five point seven BLS. Right. Blah blah blah. I mean, they need ninety seven point one. The yeah, yeah, you know, I think you know. It's funny. You, you I thought that voice. when I thought that when we all started this back in twenty thirteen, I thought that you know this was going to be like our American Idol, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> Unless somebody ah. would have called. Say, so, you know, we got somebody that we need somebody for WNBC. WNBC. And I thought we would get that yes. call, but it yes. never came. But nonetheless, we still move forward. Frog, thank you for the no. compliment, though. But there's, there's really very few people I can think of that I listen to that have that voice. And you're one of the people, you know, it's like you and it's like Big Cloud. And man, you, you guys got a voice. And it's like, yo, that's a voice. When you hear it, you know who it is. And so I, I appreciate definitely that. Got, thank you. Definitely got to shout you guys out. Uh, shout out to Kids Move. Uh, for keeping it, you know, Xbox gaming and, and primarily there. And, um, you know, uh, really shout out to them for, you know, uh, being forthcoming a new generation of gaming. And really, you know, him and Gaming Ad especially. I got to shout out Gaming Ad. Yeah, shout out Gaming Ad. For really, for, for really, like, you know, telling Microsoft and, and, you know, even though that's the primary place to play on Xbox, no hate against them. It's just like, look, we want better. You know, I watch Kids Move and I listen to Kids Move. My son is a is a big Kids Move. My oldest son is a big Kids Move fan. You know, he always like, hey, you see who Kids Move posted? And so <laughs> I always got if I don't catch it, my son will. And he's like, you know, after you watch that whole Sony event, all the stuff you were saying, it really resonated because my oldest son is like the 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 primary OG Xbox guy in our house. He's like the one who who dies and lives by, by Xbox. So I, I'll say shout out to you, man, because uh I think even though he plays primarily on PlayStation now, uh, because he kind of has no choice, because that's what we primarily buy. Frog, he still has an Xbox, Frog put, the, right? put the hammer down. Yeah. Frog's like, I will not have that. Yeah. <laughs> you he either live here and play Xbox, PlayStation right? he won't, he, <laughs> outside. He won't get his Xbox up, right? And when he heard Smooth, <laughs> when he saw that PlayStation show and hear what Smooth was saying, you know, he had the same Frog sentiment. You know, he fe- no, he felt like, you know, he felt like Smooth did. He was like, man. He's like, Dad, this is where I started gaming on Xbox. He's like, everything Kiss Move is saying. And I said, you know, that resonated with him, you know, because, you know, he's, what, 24, you know, and I'm an older guy, so he's 24, and it resonated with him because that's his first <laughs> game console he truly remembered was his OG Xbox, and what you said really resonated with him as, like, uh, Xbox gamer. So he wants some of the same things you see. Even though he plays on PlayStation, he wants Xbox to be his primary console. He wants he wants better for them. And it's kind of like I say and just say, even though we we kind of like sound like we're dogging them, I want to be able to say, man, I own an Xbox series, whatever, and man, I got this game and it's nowhere else. I want to be able to say this game is this, this game is that. And I, I, it's not even for clout. It's not even for like baiting PlayStation guys. It's just because I just want to be able to like, damn, I got a good game over here. And if you don't need an Xbox, you definitely need to go out and buy one. I want to be able to promote that thing just as much as I, I promote whatever the Switch does or, you know, whatever the, uh, you know, PS5 does. PC is kind of like a different animal because like, you kind of yeah, get the best of everywhere. Hey, you get the best of everywhere with the PC. From oh, I was just about to say that. I just want you to come play on PC. It, Fro- hey, Frog wants, he wants that Halo one, Xbox, one, man. That's all he wants. Hey, well, thank hey, you, Frog. Number one, Mark, I don't want to do it because I already know what's going to happen. I know how I am with things. I invest in, like I'm, I'm like with my cars, dude. If I get into PC gaming, I know how I'm gonna be. I gotta have the best of the best of the best of the best. So I already know how it's gonna be. He knows where it's gonna and go. I don't want to start well, throwing money like that. And yeah, dude. dude they, well, I just want to say, I, look, awesome. I'm you, I want to do it. You know, I, know <laughs> how, I, I know how <laughs> my habits can be. That's habit forming. <laughs> dude that's happened well i want to thank everybody again awesome awesome show uh i want to thank you guys again for coming and celebrating it and it was great i'm glad you know we got through almost everything here i hope everybody liked the grinding gear we will uh the pool house shout out to buck roger likes his pool and you know shout out to all the grinders out there you know uh, there's so many out there garuda legend shout out to you man curtis i know he came in late he said but uh you know hit that like button everybody share out the video Comment down below. Maybe add some more topics for next week when we come back to the Gaming Grindhouse. But till then, keep it grinding, everybody. And thank you again for an awesome show. And uh, again, thank you. I can't say thank you enough to the grinders and to my panel. See you later, everybody. Good night.